The following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. There are a few more Cowboys in Texas than usual today. 10th ranked Oklahoma State in Austin for an early kick. Longhorns head coach Tom Herman personally made sure his guys got to bed early last night. Oh, Alana. Alana. I got some buddies here. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I got some friends. All right. Love you, everybody. Yes, sir. Hey, you big guy. Love you, man. Your best is good enough, right? Oh. I'm excited to watch you guys play tomorrow. All right? 6 a.m. Get some sleep. Texas-sized nightmare is certainly a possibility, knowing that awaiting the Longhorns, the number one offense in the country, Heisman hopeful Mason Rudolph and Oklahoma State. And these Cowboys like to start fast. The opening kickoff is next on ABC. You're watching College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers. Tepsil creeping to the mid-80s. DKR Texas Memorial Stadium as we welcome you in. Say good morning from Austin, Texas with Brian Greasy. I'm Steve Levy. Todd McShay shortly. So Oklahoma State comes in the fancy 5-1 record. Here's Texas 3-3. Three and three. What they have in common is 2-1 and one in the conference. That makes this a big game in the Big 12. I think it's a huge game in the Big 12. There's still six weeks of football left in conference play. Five teams are 2-1 and one in the conference. So this conference, this game is going to go a long way in determining who the uh, teams are going to be in the championship game. The Cowboys offense is explosive as you know I mean in half of their games half of them they've scored exactly 59 points that is mind-boggling Texas has won the toss they have deferred so we will see that on Oklahoma State offense first Joshua Rowland field goals has been an issue for Texas we'll see about kickoffs Tyron Johnson is back for the Cowboys. So meets leather. It's a low kick, and we are underway. And they'll bounce out of the back of the end zone. And down to Tom McShay. Well, guys, this Texas defense, you remember, gave up 44 points to Maryland in the opener. But since then, they've figured it out, giving up just 19.4 points per game in the last five. They've gotten more physical up front, better play from their linebackers and their cornerbacks, which will be challenged today, doing a really good job in coverage. So we're going to watch these matchups of the big physical wide receivers Oklahoma State against these corners who are all six foot or taller for the Texas Longhorns. Texas could not afford a letdown after their rivalry loss. The Red River rivalry game, 29-24 to Oklahoma a week ago. There's Mason Rudolph on first down, throwing as you might expect. And it is juggled and caught. There's his top target, James Washington. And to Todd's point, this Texas defense will be challenged by Mason Rudolph. I think, quite simply, he's playing the quarterback position better. Anybody in college football right now, he's got these bevy of wide receivers and skill positions that to support him. Outstanding play. Second and one. Rudolph will run for it and have the first down easily. I think he was going to take a shot there on second and one. They throw the ball down the field, as you would expect. Washington is usually the guy. Top running back in the conference is Justice Hill. That's Jalen McCluskey in motion. Bottom of your screen. On first and ten. Rudolph blitz up the middle. He was hit as he released, and it was dropped. That's Malik Jefferson, the Mike linebacker. Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator, loves to bring internal pressure and test the protection schemes of offensive line. Rudolph does a nice job of getting rid of that ball, but that hit there affected the throw and led to an incompletion. Keenan Brown couldn't hang on at the Cowboy back position. Second down and ten. On the ground, and Justice Hill. Wow, he's hit hard. Back to the line of scrimmage. Anthony Wheeler and Malik Jefferson leading the way. A good credit to Holton Hill. The corner comes up from his position on the outside. We're going to play too deep. you got to be able to support from the corner spot. Going fast now, third and ten. And the pass is too high for James Washington. 
Good coverage on the play from Holton Hill. And they get the offense off the field, Texas does. You don't want to overstate the importance early in the first quarter of the game, but that's all Texas talked about yesterday, the coaching staff, about how important it was to get off to a fast start and to get some stops against this se the second-best scoring offense in the country. 80 to 20, that's what Oklahoma State has been outscoring opponents in the first quarter of the season. So huge stop for that Texas D. Zach Siner will put it in the air from his 27. Reggie Hemphill maps runs up for the fair catch. And there is some contact, but I don't see a flag. Out of the 27-yard line, only a true freshman. Sam Ellinger is already a Longhorn leader. His teammates marvel at his toughness. I think he's a hard-nosed player. He's very tough. He's just uh, gritty. He's not scared of anyone. And he likes to run the ball, and he does not shy away from contact. He takes people on. No Kyle Porter with him. That's Tennille Carter. He sends in motion. Quick screen out to Carter, and he drops that. Forward pass incomplete. You know, Sam's not your uh, typical 18-year-old true freshman. You see he's got the size. Really big lower body allows him to run the ball with physicality. But it's more impressive his his makeup and character and leadership to me. Quick throw to Dorian Leonard. The other side will try it off the size. Maybe a yard on that play. We're going to third long. A.J. Green had the cover. I think the big, the big key for Sam in this game is not trying to out-duel the guy on the other sideline and Mason Rudolph. Just play your game, play within the system, control the football, and give yourself a chance in the second half. Three and outs will be a killer for Texas here today. Want to keep Mason Rudolph off the field. And that's how that's how TCU stayed with Oklahoma State. They ran the ball. So Texas, who has not been able to run the ball with a whole lot of effectiveness, has to find it today. There's third and eight. Chris Warren in there now. No pass protect. And Ellinger on the move. Rolling to his right and throwing. And let's see. They call it a catch. They do. Lorenzo Joe had the catch. He had just enough yardage for the first down. Yeah, great job by Joe on the sideline. Nice job by Ellinger. Extending the play, getting a big first down. Nine yards on the play. Just Joe's sixth catch of the season. Here's Sam to throw it. Hooks up with Dorian Leonard. See where they mark the forward progress. Trey Flowers brings him down. I can't tell you the amount of confidence having two completions like this for first downs can give a young quarterback. Playing at home, you know it's an explosive offense on the other side. Play within yourself. Second down and one. Quick screen to Warren. He's across midfield. He has plenty for the first down. One thing we'll watch for today with Ellinger is, is pocket patience. Coaches talked a lot about it yesterday. They love him running. They love his ability to create and extend plays. But he's got to stay in the pocket and let routes develop a little bit more. Warren on the ground. Barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. We heard talk of uh, sometimes a young quarterback will see ghosts. What does that mean? <laughs> Apropos for Halloween coming up here. That means you, you think the guys are blitzing and coming, and you make reads faster than you need to a lot of times, and you're not seeing the defense real well. I'm afraid already. <laughs> what are you going to be for Halloween, by the way? I do not dress up for Halloween. <laughs> What kind of Chinese food did you go as last year? Right? <laughs> sushi. Yeah, sushi. Sushi, yes. Greasy sushi. A fumble on the snap there. Never got back to Ellinger. And that's Shackleford to center. He's been nicked up this season, Steve. That ball, I know sometimes a, the center will think that the quarterback is under center when he's in the shotgun. A little bit of miscommunication. They're lucky to get back. And they go so fast. Third and nine. Shackleford returned last week after not playing against Kansas State. Already without their best offensive lineman in Connor Williams. He's out indefinitely. Third and nine. That's a bad snap, shotgun snap. Ellinger will hang in there and throw off the hands of Hemphill Maps. And a bring up a fourth down. And you get a couple of first downs, you get a bad snap. This snap's a little bit out to the right. You see he has to save it. 
that takes the quarterback's eyes off of the defense and this ball's a little bit late to maps on the inside if it's thrown on time could have been a first down but if you have those kinds of, of errors for a true freshman at quarterback and not supporting him and you don't get the first down Michael Dixon got it away one of the great punters in all of college football and it'll bounce and be down at about the eight yard line Texas defense did what they had to do in that first series. Mason Rudolph will get a second crack at the Longhorns when we come back. Scoreless early on from Austin. Mason Rudolph and Justice Hill back on the field, but it's the wide receivers everybody talks about. Yeah, the best group in all of college football, Steve, and they're different types of receivers. You know, James Washington gets all the headlines, but eight minutes now come on as this season has progressed. McCleskey had a huge game against Pitt. I mean, they have six or seven wide receivers that can make you pay in this offense. It's funny, Texas feels that's their most talented position as well, top to bottom. On first down and 10, hand off to Justice Hill. Trying to find some space around the end there. Gain a two on the play. Chris Nelson and Anthony Wheeler made the stop. I think what's interesting is if you talk to the wide receiver coach, Casey Dunn, he recruits specific types, body types, and skill sets for the different positions at wide receiver. That's different than most schools. Here's Hill. He's tripped up. Might have been tripped up by his own player there. And I bring up a third down and long. Yeah, I would I'd recruit specific body types too if I could find Mike Evans. <laughs> yeah. You look at Aitman, I mean he's all he looks exactly like Mike Evans. He is a big dude. Washington and Aitman each have a hundred plus receiving yards in four straight games. That's the first time that's been done. Dating back to 1996, maybe even longer. The stats just don't go back any further than that. Here's third and nine. McCluskey in motion. Rudolph the throw. Has plenty of time. Now the pressure from behind, and he's going to be sacked. Dropped at the 10 by Jeffrey McCulloch. So this is exactly what TCU and Gary Patterson did in their win against Oklahoma State. They played two deep coverage and then man to man on the underneath, and they let the rush get to. Mason Rudolph, you see nowhere to throw this football. Everybody is locked up, and then you only rush four, and somebody's got to get home. That's the way you play Oklahoma State's offense. Officially not a sack. It goes as a run back to the line of scrimmage. And Bill Max will run up. Runs into his own player. The collision, the ball bounces out of bounds. Bumped into Holton Hill. So some confusion there, but still, Texas will take over with outstanding field position. Yeah, not a great kick there, and Texas, now with their second drive, will be in plus territory. They got to get this whole line going, though, Steve. This whole line, obviously, that's Connor Williams, the All-American, number 55. He hurt his knee in the uh, SC game, talking to true freshman. Kerstetter there, that's the right tackle. He's been a, a leader, even though he's been hurt, and that's the sign of, of great captains and great leaders in college football as they're still contributing on the side. Texas takes over at the 43 of Oklahoma State. It's Gerard Hurd, the ball carrier. Won't get back to the line of scrimmage. A.J. Green was there. You know, it hasn't just been Connor Williams. You see all the injuries up front on this offensive line. Patrick Hudson, Eli Rodriguez, Andrew Beck is a tight end, but he was more like a tackle for them, so they've got to find some consistency up front. Dorian Leonard on the quick screen out of the 40-yard line. Williams is expected to come back. They thought he might need surgery. Turns out he didn't need the surgery, but head coach Tom Herman saying that he thought Williams and Rodriguez would return before the end of the regular season. So that is great news for Texas. They try to figure things out. Third down and seven. At the 40 of the Cowboys. Ellinger almost tripped up. And I think he was trying to throw that away, out of bounds. Lorenzo Joe was able to catch it, but he was out of bounds. Bring up a fourth down, and 
they're beyond field goal position. Yeah, that's back-to-back -back drives where Texas got behind the chains, third and long, right? Third and nine, third and seven. That is not where you want to have a true freshman quarterback in Sam Ellinger. You want to be in third and five or less so that his legs are still a part of the equation. That's his best asset right now. Michael Dixon gets it away. And that'll be caught. I mean, flat out caught at the two by Chris Boyd. Dixon's had seven punt returns all season long. 36 yard punt. Doesn't sound sexy, but it's perfect. College football on ABC is presented by K Jewelers. K Jewelers, who would like to remind you that right now it's engagement season. In part by BMW, we only make one thing the ultimate driving machine. And the Home Depot, more saving, more doing. Westlake High School here in Austin, they've had some chuckers over the years, huh? Drew Brees, Nick Foles, Sam Ellinger, and Sam's mom in attendance. We've had season tickets forever, the Ellinger family. I asked, did they upgrade your seats when you became the starting quarterback of Texas? Nope, they sit in there, long time season tickets. That's James Washington on the reception. Set for an update, there's Kevin Nagandi. Steve, thank you. Check out the AT&T Field Pass. Let's go to Madison, number five, Wisconsin, hosting Maryland. Sixth play of the game. We got a ball in the air. The big man, TJ Edwards, 54 yards to the house. He will score the Badgers on the board first. Kevin, we got a ball in the air, too. That was completed to James Washington. A whole lot of tempo, and I mean up-tempo, <laughs> with these two squads. Every time we do a cut-in, we're going to miss a play in this game. 14 yards on the last completion. This time it's to Jalen McCleskey. It's okay. a short game. DJ Locke had the coverage. DJ Locke. Mason Rudolph uh, currently owns 29 school records, and he figures to add a few more today. Every time he goes out, he adds a few more records. Intended for Chris Lacey. Excellent coverage by Chris Boyd. The ceiling's super high on Boyd. Yeah, super high on Boyd. And the question is, can he continue to play within the style of defense? He's a great cover man in man-to-man, -man, but zone is where Todd Orlando, a defensive coordinator, says Boyd needs to get better with his eyes in the backfield. So far, so good for Texas defensively. Lots of personnel changes with his Longhorns defense here. On second and ten. Five to snap it. They just set the ball now. Two to snap it. They just get it off. Or did they? I thought they got it off in time, but a timeout was called. Timeout, Texas, first and a half. Texas spends a timeout on defense. Timeout. This was interesting. We were talking with Todd Orlando yesterday. You know, with all these substitutions and all this kind of up-tempo offense, sometimes he will delay his substitutions just to delay the offense. I think it came back to bite him right there because they weren't lined up correctly. He had to take a timeout. The season for Texas, I mean, it's, it's been up and down. No one will forget, certainly around these parts, but around the country, the big shocker, the opening loss to Maryland, 51 to 41. Then they played great, lost to USC in double overtime. And there was a double overtime victory over Kansas State. And then in their rivalry game, Red River showdown. A week ago, they lost to Oklahoma 29-24. We talked to Malik Jefferson about it. He really thinks they, they should have beaten Oklahoma and beaten USC. He said the Maryland loss was on us. Yep. That's our real loss, but we really feel like they should be 5-1. Well, I think, you know, I throw the Maryland game out. Todd Orlando did as well. It's the first game with a new staff, a new system. You have no idea how it's going to look. They have played very good defensively since that game and really, frankly, kept them in game. Here comes pressure. Picked up nicely, and Rudolph's able to complete the Tyron Johnson for the first down. So that was the Texas defense out of the timeout. And good adjustments by Mason Rudolph, the Mac Yersick, the offensive coordinator. Getting a lot of man coverage from Texas off the bat. Run some man beaters. Gain of seven off the play fake. 
and throwing. Wide open is McCluskey. Found a seam down the middle of the field, and he's brought down the 30 of the Longhorns. You cannot let Jalen McCluskey run free in the middle of your defense. He will kill you, just as the Pitt Panthers. Gain of 29 on the play. Here's Justice Hill. Pick up about four. And I think P.J. Locke, the, the nickel back for Texas, number 11, he's played a big role today, six feet, 205 pounds. He's going to play in this area right here. He's kind of in between, has to play the run and the pass, but you can't let McCluskey get by you after down 10 yards downfield. On second down and seven again. Way too open was Chris Lacey inside the 10. You see these adjustments. For Mason Rudolph, they were getting man coverage, so they call some man beaters. Then when Texas audibles and they go to their zone, now you see McCluskey and Lacey getting open in the middle of the field. This is a drive that started back at the Cowboys four-yard line. It's first and goal from inside the 10. J.D. King is in the backfield. Two tight ends, and they'll hand it off to King. And he crashes down to the seven-yard line, second and goal. Now, as much as you've given up yards on this drive, Texas defensively, you still got to think, if we could force a field goal attempt here, that would be a big win. The thing that happens to Oklahoma State inside the 10-yard line is the speed of those wide receivers is neutralized, right, because the field is constricted. Last week against Baylor, they used Justice Hill quite a bit in the Wildcat formation because of that. Tenth play of the drive. And started from their own four. Hand off to King. And running room. Left side. Crashes into the end zone. Touchdown. Oklahoma State draws first blood. You want to talk about the receivers and how much they do catching the football. But right here, take a look at Jalen McCleskey. Outstanding job on the outside. It's not just a glitz and glamour at the wide receiver position for Oklahoma State. Justice Hill leads the Big 12 in rushing for a reason. Matt Evandola, perfect on the season for extra points. And he's got that one too. J.D. King, the true freshman from Fitzgerald, Georgia. But it's the pass and the completion of Chris Lacey that set things up. Texas football when we come back. It's a 96 yard touchdown drive. They take only 252 off the clock. I was amazed by this. Time of possession for Oklahoma State. They rank 120th in the country. Doesn't matter. And they're the second scoring offense. You think they have the football all game? They don't. You ask Gundy, he says points matter, not minutes. That's amazing. <laughs> only uh, UCF has scored more points per game than Oklahoma State. UCF scored better than 50 a game. Chris Boyd from his five. Out ahead to the 20 and a fine, fine run back out to the 29-yard line. That's where Sam Ellinger and company will start. Right, guys, Ellinger, I think his best a tangible trait is his mobility, his ability to extend plays. Here you see a good decision from the freshman. You got the linebackers going to undercut that route. There he is, extending, but also keeping his eyes down the field. And look at his feet crossed over. Greasy, I don't even know how he made that throw. That's an unbelievable throw. I, I don't think I've ever seen a guy make a throw like that. He, he's got some really cool skill sets, Todd. But I, I disagree with you. I think his best intangible is his leadership and his toughness. I mean, there's second to I thought Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma last week, said it best. He's the kind of guy you can build your team around. I think Tom Herman agrees. Leadership and toughness for an 18-year-old. Still got a few pimples on the face. He's rolling to his right. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and out of bounds. Back to Kevin Nagani in the studio. Steve, AT&T Field Pass. Let's go to Lubbock here. The duo that shot to Oklahoma. Doing some work early. Kyle Kemp to Alan Lazard. Iowa State up 7-6 over Texas Tech in the first quarter. Back to you, Steve and Brian. And just in the nick of time, thank you. Here's Sam on the move to the right. There is a flag. It's in the backfield. We'll check the marker. It's the holding neighborhood. That's the one thing with a mobile quarterback like Sam Ellinger. He's going he's gonna to flush outside the pocket, and those offensive linemen get caught with their arms extended. They have to learn to release. Take a look at the center here, Shackelford. Holding. 
Number 56, offense, 10-yard penalty, sit down. It's our referee, Scott Campbell. We introduce him now. That's the first penalty of the game. This Texas offense is just not explosive enough to recover from these types of penalties. Back him up. A second and 20. Ellinger. Well, the herd in heavy traffic will pick up two. Texas has already seen their earlier two possessions, Greece. They've gotten out of the Oklahoma State 47 and the Oklahoma State 40. I mean, you'd like to see, you know, some points out of that. They've been forced to punt both times. Yeah, and I think part of the part of the problem for Texas on the offensive side, they're starting four true freshmen. The, the quarterback, the right tackle, the tight end, and they got a back that's all true freshmen starting. And, and then you had those injuries up front, so they don't really have anything they can hang their hat on right now. Third and 18. The danger zone. Ellinger. Able to complete. Able to hook up with Colin Johnson. He's well short of the first down marker. Johnson's been a bit of a problem for them. Did not be in the starting lineup today. That's a big deal here in Texas. That was a great throw there. Colin Johnson, 6'6", 220 pounds. He looks the part, but uh, he needs to be more consistent with his physicality. When you're that tall sometimes, Steve, at the receiver position, it's just a bigger target for corners to get up and press you, and that's been the biggest thing that he struggled with this season. Wearing out Michael Dixon early. Dylan Stoner is back. Take a few kicks, a uh, few steps to the right. A little rugby style kicker for the Sydney Australia punter. And it's Stoner is forced out at the 23 yard line. Great college football for you continuing this afternoon. The U will host Syracuse, America's darlings, yeah. off their victory at home in the. Carrier Dome in central New York. Those people there enjoyed that a week ago. We'll see how they bounce back in Miami. Fortunate to stay undefeated heading in. And then tonight, the big one here on ABC. It's Michigan and Penn State. 7.30 Eastern. You should get home in time to watch that one. Huh? Yeah, and hopefully if everything goes well. I'm looking forward to seeing Eric Dungy, though, honestly, against that Miami defense. Dungy was the reason they, they pulled that upset against Clemson. Here's Rudolph being chased. Chased by Taquan Graham. There is a flag down. Graham is a freshman. True freshman from Temple, Texas. The flag came down late in the secondary. They're going to get to Texas with a hold. Playing a lot of man coverage in the back end. And when you do that, you got to make sure you're not holding. Holding. Number five. Defense. Defense. That 10 yard penalty will be added at the end of the run. The penalty results in a first down. That's Holton Hill. You know, Steve, if you were uh, guarding James Washington, you might be holding too. <laughs> it's the best receiver in college football. It just gets that hand. You know, Washington's so quick. He's got the speed, the breakaway track speed, but he also can make those cuts in real speed at full speed, and it's very difficult on defenders. Washington, a Texas kid. Penalty brings the ball out to the 34. Hand off to Justice Hill. And he'll lose yardage there. Oklahoma State is going to struggle, I think, to run the football against this Texas defense. They've been much better, but when you got Mason Rudolph, you don't really need to run the ball. You just keep feeding it to him in the pass game. Here's Hill again. Has first down yardage right up the middle. And that's the interesting strategy. You expect the run, or you expect the pass all the time, and so you need a little Justice Hill. Well, this Oklahoma State team, you ask Mike Gundy, they want to have balance. That's the word you hear most from them. 15 yard gain on the last run, and now Rudolph is throwing. And what a catch. Marcel Aitman went up to grab it and held on. What a grab. Well, Todd mentioned Mike Evans. This looks just like Mike Evans, doesn't it? Huge wide receiver at 6'4", 220, one-handed, unbelievable catch. Inbounds, gain of seven. Rudolph pumps to the right, throws across the middle of the hill out of the backfield. He's got first down yardage. Anthony Wheeler brought him down, but you can see this Cowboy offense starting to click now. Quick screen. 
out to Aitman. And he's forced out of bounds after the short game. These wide receivers block as well. Last week, Justice Hill had a big run, and it was Marcel Aitman that had the block on the outside and sprang up for the touchdown. And we got Bukleski with the block on their, their first scoring drive for the touchdown as well. So they are unselfish. That's the thing that's most impressive about this Oklahoma State offense and a reason why I think it's so explosive. Nobody complains about not getting the ball, and everybody blocks in the wide receiver position. Second down and eight. J.D. King in the backfield. That's Britton Abbott the Cowboy back spot. Here's Rudolph to throw. Across the middle. And it's broken up. Chris Lacey was the intended target. Chris Boyd was with him all the way. That brings up a third and eight situation here, which we think would favor the Texas Longhorns, but they have not been able to get consistent enough pressure on Mason Rudolph to get him off this spot. We talked to Todd Orlando. He's had to do more from a pressure standpoint to get pressure on quarterbacks this season than he would like because that defensive line just hasn't been consistent enough rushing the pass. Cowboys have run 25 offensive plays. It's the fourth time they've been faced with a third down. Here's third and eight in the final minute. Rudolph 10 of 14 so far for 108 yards. And Oklahoma State calls timeout. Timeout. Oklahoma State. First and a half. Big third down here in the final minute of the first quarter when we come back. It's time to get smart about home security. Introducing Floodlight Cam by Ring. A motion-activated security light with an HD camera. Don't even think about it. That lets you know when anyone steps on your property. Illuminate every corner of your home with a ring of security. Smart enough to detect people and objects. Hey, girls. Hi, Dad. With Floodlight Cam, you can stop crime before it happens. Protecting your home has never been easier. Now that's security in a whole new light. Available at ring.com. Rising from the plains of Oklahoma is a destination for scholars and thinkers, dreamers and doers. This is where hope, hard work, and integrity create tomorrow's catalyst for change. And excellence is the standard demanded not only of your head, but your heart. This is Oklahoma State University, America's brightest orange. What starts here creates leaders and sparks our future. What starts here lights our way. What starts here leads to answers to the world's toughest problems. What starts here builds opportunity and lifts up our communities. What starts here feeds the soul. What starts here changes the world. The University of Texas at Austin. Welcome back to Austin. The last third down scenario there looked like Todd Orlando wanted to play a 2D defense. Oklahoma State takes a timeout. Wonder if Todd Orlando might dial up some pressure here in this situation. A lot of defenders to one side of the football. Loading up the right side. They put it on the ground at Justice Hill. And he's going to get the first down. How about the mighty Oklahoma State passing offense on third and eight? They hand the ball off for the first down. Well, this was the perfect defense dialed up the blitz from that side. And you see the linebacker there, Gary Johnson, just not able to get Justice Hill on the ground. That's a, that's a missed opportunity for Texas defensively. Late flag came in. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 46, defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. Malik Jefferson better be on his best behavior the rest of the way. He's got him up, he's got him up. That's, that's a terrible call. Didn't think there was a little extra toss at the end? I can't, I can't defend that call at all, no. I, that's a terrible call. It's nine on the run by Hill on the third and eight. And they tack on 14 on the penalty. They get a total of 23 because they're inside the 15. 29 seconds left. The quarter. Here's Justice Hill taking some people on. He 
Crashes down at the seven yard line. 18 seconds left. See if they run another play here in the first quarter. Yeah, you kidding? That's like uh, enough time for four plays for Oklahoma State's offense, but a two touchdowns. They're slowing it down here. I think they're gonna let the quarter. And that's how the first quarter will come to an end in Austin. Seven nothing, Cowboys. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. State is proud to be part of a team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. And that has to be a good thing every time. Levy, Greasy, and McShay welcome you back to open up quarter number two. Second down and four from the seven. Here's Justice Hill. He's going to lose a bunch, and the ball comes out. Texas says they have it. Chris Nelson knocked it free, and there it is. There's the call. First turnover of the game belongs to the Longhorns. Well, and Chris, give credit to Puna Ford, the nose tackle number 95. He's the one that got upfield. You see the knee is not down. He's actually being held up here. And then Puna Ford rips it out with that right hand. It's a great job by a senior defensive tackle making a play for his team. They had to get a stop here, Leaves. And this Oklahoma State offense is so explosive, and you can see that was pretty clear that his knees were not on the ground, and he was on top of Nelson. And an alert play by Puna Ford. Coaching staff told us that Ford is the one true playmaker they have on defense. And the big fella made a play. Deshaun Elliott able to recover for Texas. And take another look at this as they should. You see feet and then no part of his body that touches the ground. He's not down on top of that player 97, Nelson. I think that's a pretty clear look. This is a defense in Todd Orlando that they make a living getting turnovers. You know, when he was at Houston, he was a, a, one of the best in college football. In 2015, they had 35 takeaways that led all of college football. So it's something they coach every single day in practice. And you can see where Puna Ford had his hand on that ball. And when you know a guy's down, how about that left knee? It. Any chance that left knee was down? The knee is not on Puna Ford's body. No, I don't think that knee was down. I mean, the ball's out. I don't think that knee was on the ground. And where this comes into play is the call on the field is yeah. fumble, turnover. We'll see what conclusive video evidence they could have to possibly overturn that. Talk to me, Mr. Campbell. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It was a fumble. First down, Texas. And confirmed is the key word yep. there. Yep. Well, that was well done. I mean, that was a big play in the game, and there was a, it was close, but that was... Really well done by this uh, Big 12 officiating crew and the officials in the replay booth. Such a big play, too. Remember, they trailed 17-0 last week. They struggled with slow starts, and they know against this offense that they, they simply cannot get behind two, three scores. It's only their second fumble recovery of the season. The majority of their turnovers, 90% of them, have come via the interception. But they'll take it any way they can. Here's Ellinger going to step up and able to dump it off. We'll see if they'll say the quarterback was down. Daniel Young, who is Young, the true freshman from Houston, caught the football. Um, this is just a, a young quarterback, and pressure gets up on him fast. It's Enoch Smith, a transfer from Michigan State. See how powerful Erlinger is not to go down, but... John Burke down the sideline. He's not going down anytime soon. They're not going to catch him from behind. John Burke. Oh, he's tripped over the two. Stumbling, rumbling, bumbling down the two-yard line. I don't know how John Burke stayed in bounds. It looked pretty clear that he was going to go out of bounds, but tippy-toe on the sideline. That's good for 90. Texas wants to snap it quick, and they do. Alligator trying to run in. He gets there. Touchdown. 
And now they shoot the cannons off and mean it for the score. We want to talk about three plays, swings and momentum. The fumble by Puna Ford, the senior. Then a missed tackle on the Oklahoma State defense, and Burt goes 90 yards down. See, here's Burt. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. It was four or five steps. Tiptoe through the, the sideline. I don't know how A.J. Green, the corner, didn't just push him out. Texas was in a second and 16 at their own eight. Two plays later, they're in the end zone. John Burke, you saw some of the track speed they talk about down the sideline in a fancy footwork. Well, John Burke has been, uh, he came on, burst onto the scene as a true freshman because of that speed you mentioned. Now he's been kind of the forgotten man in this Texas wide receiver crew. They talk more about Colin Johnson and little Jordan Humphrey, Lorenzo Joe, and He's, uh, he's not got as many looks, but certainly a huge play in this first half for Texas. Maybe, maybe they're looking to see if Ellinger's knee was down before the end zone. Extra point on the way, and it's good. Big plays everywhere you look, up and down the field. And we're seven all, exactly where the Longhorns want to be early second quarter. Absolutely. And Sometimes you can help a true freshman quarterback with just an amazing play. And that's so that's AJ Green the corner. Take a look at the left foot of Burt. Boy, there were a couple there. He came down with the left foot and then the toes were on the ground and the heel was up because the heel looked like it was out of bounds. Right? That one and that one right there. Whoa, oh my gosh. You're right. There were literally five steps there where I think his heel was over the white. Would have been out of bounds if it was on the ground, but it didn't look like it was. You can't get any closer than this and not be out of bounds. My goodness. AJ Green's going to be kicking himself for that one. One more tug, right? One more push, one more shove. Well, he might not just be kicking himself. I think Mike Gundy might be kicking him as well. <laughs> Huge momentum swing. It's a little bit different this Texas team this year. You know, last year they they would get down in games and, and then people would start to just say, okay, this is going to go south, right? But this team's got more energy. And, and Tom Herman's changed the culture. Great they example fight. of that energy. Yeah, they fight. They didn't give up against SC on the road. They didn't give up last week down 20-0 in Oklahoma. You can get lost in a 3-3 three and three record. That does not tell the story of this Texas team. Here's Tyron Johnson now. Getting away from the tackle out of the 20, maybe to the 20. They'll mark him at the 22-yard line. But an amazing turn of events. We asked Tom Herman, what would be success for you this season? And he said, among the things he said was, hey, we got to win a game we're not supposed to win. Right. And I said, is this one of those games? And he said, well, yes, it is. Absolutely. So, so they are right there, right where they want to be at this point. And he also said, we want to be competitive in the Big 12 race at the end of the regular season. Well, Steve, if they can find some way to win this game, right, at home, they would be right there. They still got TCU coming up. They've already played Oklahoma. Here's Rudolph to throw and complete to Marcel Aitman. Has the first down. I think Oklahoma State wants to settle this game down a little bit. Crowd all of a sudden has really gotten into it, too. Here's Rudolph to Justice Hill out of the backfield, but a good tackle by Holton Hill. And a flag comes out. They're going to get Texas for illegal substitution here. There's so many different substitution packages that Todd Orlando wants to get in, and the whole goal of Oklahoma State and Mike Gundy is not to allow them to substitute, keep that defense on the field, and, and get them tired. And I think they caught him. Illegal substitution, 12-minute formation, defense, five-yard penalty from the previous spot, still first down. You got to be smart, you know, when, when you're making these wholesale changes here after a first down in particular and hustling off the field, and that was Amena who wasn't able to get off the field.
So it's a first and five after they pick up the marker. Three seconds of snap. They get it off. Here's Justice Hill. And nothing there. He'll take a loss of a yard on the play. Excellent defense. Hill and Jefferson there to bring him down. Yeah, give an assist to Malcolm Roach, too. You know, Malcolm Roach needs to play a big game, I think. You talk about Puna Ford a lot, but if Texas is going to slow down this offense, those defensive linemen got to play well. We off the throw out to McCleskey. Excellent, more excellent defense by Texas. Holton Hill was there to make first contact. That's the third play Holton Hill has made coming up and making a physical tackle. We saw one in the run game, then he hit Justice Hill, and this time, nice job by Hill getting McCleskey on the ground and Locke to finish it up. Third and four. Exactly the same look that Texas brought in the first quarter. The coverage downfield. Take a look. See if you can see anybody open downfield. Nobody there. There's nobody here. Covered. Coverage everywhere. And finally, Brecken Hager comes free on Mason Rudolph. That's exactly how Todd Orlando drew it up. Zach Siner has struggled. Point uh, punts of 34 and 32 yards so far in the game. This is by far his best punt of the day. And it'll be downed at the 23-yard line. It's a 42-yard punt. Texas has tied the game, and they've got the football when we come back. If you're just joining us earlier, Oklahoma State went 96 yards down the field for a touchdown. But the reason Texas is tied is because of a fumble and then a 90-yard pass completion. The longest non-touchdown reception in Texas history. John Burt from Sam Ellinger. So Ellinger gets credit for 90 yards passing on that play. Yeah, you know, they take hits too, so. <laughs> out of the backfield. Sam comes up throwing, and again, it is John Burt. This time he does go out of bounds. <laughs> I, like, I like this. You know, a kid makes a big play, right? You didn't know he was going to be kind of your go-to receiver coming into the game. But he makes a big play, he's feeling good about himself. Keep feeding him. Why wouldn't you? Second and one. Four receivers to the right. So of course, Sam runs to the left. Where there should be some running room. Has the first down. Justin Phillips dropped him. So Sam apparently was pretty nervous a week ago. The big Red River showdown. They said he came out to warm ups, threw four outs over through all four out of bounds. Can you imagine? I mean, he's, that's all he's ever dreamt about growing up was playing in that game, and he had to be. Had to have some nerves. Quick screen out the Hemp Hill maps. Put him in a second and short. That's yeah, not a knock. How could you not be nervous? Yeah, but I you mean, would think going through that will help him going forward like today. Absolutely. I mean, it could, couldn't be any more of a big stage than it was a week ago. So he's going to calm down here in this first half, and they're going to keep running him. Got the first down. Stays in bounds and on his feet. He's across midfield. No, I think this Texas uh, offense and Tim Beck, their offensive coordinator, they don't want to run Sam Ellinger too much. He ran 20 times a week ago. I think that was a little too much. He got dinged up uh, at the end of that Oklahoma game. But I think they need to get him 10 to 12 carries because he is effective using his feet. I said he was across midfield. They marked it just short of the 50 in a timeout called by Oklahoma State. And there's a flag down as well. Timeout, Oklahoma State, second of the half. Timeout on the field. We'll check the penalty marker when we come back. Seven all in Austin. College football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers, is brought to you by Pacific Life. Experience the power of Pacific. Nissan. Innovation that excites. And Midas, trust the Midas touch. 
is our pal Neil Everett on the right. Dress, thanks for dressing up for us, Neil. Former Longhorn in 1998 Heisman Trophy winner Ricky Williams in attendance and in the house. One of my favorite guys of all time. I played with Ricky in Miami with the Dolphins and uh, outstanding uh, guy and an even better player on the field. You going to tell the airplane story on the air or not? <laughs> no, I'll leave some other time. Never mind. <laughs> Here's Sam on the run. Breaking tackles across the 40 and he's ripped down at the 36 by the Quentin Osborne. Sam Ellinger is getting a, a reputation as one of these gritty kind of players. He's very difficult to bring down. These kinds of plays killed Oklahoma last week. And I think this whole Texas team feeds off. Him. Ellinger on the run, throwing too strong for Devin Duvernay. We talked with him yesterday, you know, and I think when I asked him about the physicality in the run game and how he likes it. He said, I don't look for contact. It's not that bad, but he doesn't mind it at all. And I think it's had an impact as you ask some of his offensive linemen. They love it. You even ask some of the defensive players. They say, man, that gets us going. And I think it's changed the energy level of this Texas team. Second and ten. Quick throw out to Warren. Has some running room. And he's out to the 30-yard line. Ramon Richards brought him down. You say he's a local kid, he's well Sam's much more than that. I mean, we asked him for we asked him about his first memory. First game he remembers coming to he said, I was so young, I can't even remember my first game. That's how long. Late substitution. Cowboys just got a player off in time. 17 to snap. It was not an issue. Here's Chris Warren. He shot of the first down. Chad Whitener brought him down. Look at that picture. Look at that picture. What's up, Sparky? <laughs> On fourth and one, they're going with Warren. Very close. Very close to the first down. Texas says they have it, as you might expect, and the Cowboys say no. Let's see what the officials say. Wow. We got it, but not by much. There's not, uh, there's not a whole lot of power up front of this Texas offensive line to run behind. Okafor, the left tackle, is a true sophomore, starting for the first time. Where they try to run right behind Patrick Bay, probably their best offensive line on the left guard, and they get just Nobody enough. Else, the line the game for a first down. The previous play was under further review. They had Warren slam it in there with his 250 pounds, and then they get the first, and then they bring in Tennille Carter, and goes 205 pounds. But... Yeah, these these plays are these line to game plays are so hard. There's so many bodies in there. These are rarely overturned from the ruling on the field just because it's hard to see. And in that look, you can't tell. In that look, it looks like he got it clearly. Wouldn't Ellinger, based on his body type and his running ability, wouldn't he be the perfect candidate for the quarterback sneak? Those kind of plays, you need one yard. Yeah, but he but he never takes a snap from under center. Could change, could fix that, Reese. Could have him go under center it's, for a play or two. It's not the easiest thing to do, right? It's actually easier to catch the ball in the shotgun than it is to take a snap under center. I'm with Levy here. We disagree. <laughs> Reese and I have had this conversation before. I'm going to let you win out since you've actually taken a snap or two. <laughs> what was easier for you? After the game, we'll go down there. We'll let you try to take a snap from one of these big hogs. The guy puts it through his legs. How come I can't? It's easy. It's not like it comes up gently. Oh, okay. <laughs> then they start sweating and it gets wet. And yeah, I'm just saying, if you haven't done it consistently, right. it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Thank you for backing me on that, though, Todd. You got it, bud. How about Ellen Guard? I've never seen a quarterback with a lower body like this. I mean, he is, he is strong. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Texas. Yeah, Todd, along, along those lines, you guys have been talking about Ellinger's legs more than any actress in history. I mean, enough about his, enough about his legs. He looks wow. like a fullback. I don't know. His, his legs might even be bigger than Ricky Williams' legs. It, you should find Ricky down there, Todd, and ask him who's got bigger legs. Earl Campbell's in the house, too. Everything. Speaking of thighs, how about Earl Campbell's thighs? Enough of the leg talk now. Can we move yeah. on? Thank you. Okay. First and ten. Send Warren in motion, top of your screen. Elegant's all by himself in the backfield. Step up and it's batted down. Batted down by Darian Daniels, a 300-pound defensive tackle. Yeah, Darian Daniels just walked Terrell Cooney back into the backfield with a bull rush. Number 79. 
Great job keeping his eyes on the quarterback, and then at the right time, as soon as that ball separates from the hand of the quarterback, they teach those D linemen to get their hands up. That was textbook by Daniels. Elder, 11 for 16. Backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. Jordan Brailford there as well, and Ellinger able to make a remarkable recovery. Yeah, this play was dead from the start. The right tackle, Kerstetter, was beat soundly, and Carter got back in there. You got to protect the football. That's clearly a fumble, just like Justice Hill was on top of a defender. Ellinger was on top and very lucky to get that ball back. That's a loss of 34. Totally changes the complexion of the drive and maybe the game. What's the chart say for third and 44? You got to play for that? Might as well just go ahead and punt it right now. Elliger to throw and complete to Hemphill Maps. They get across midfield. They get an awful lot of it back. They had to get to the 27, so they're not close. Bring up a fourth down and, and very long. So how did this, uh, this sack happen? First at our 68 right there. It's just a TV stunt. And you know, when you run that kind of stunt on a true freshman, it makes it very difficult. But you got to protect the ball as a quarterback. Fourth and 30. Here's Dixon to punt it away. That's an 11 play drive in which they got 15 yards on. So Dixon will come up and try to clean up the mess. And the fair catch down at the 12. Well, it's been exciting. It's been eventful. Rough play for Sam Ellinger on the fumble. But at least he's able to recover it. Fuck him, Sam. Taco Bell is a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans like these at games all season long. Feels like forever since Mason Rudolph had the football in his hand. Four minutes and 37 seconds that the Texas took off the uh, clock before they got the ball back. On first down and 10 from the 12. Hand off to J.D. King. Malik Jefferson to stop and fresh from her trip to Milwaukee. Here's Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Steve. Jersey Mike's a performance above. Louisville taking on Florida State. Tied at seven until Lamar Jackson here coughs it up and Matthew Thomas scoops and scores a 34-yard touchdown, but Jackson bounced right back through a 26-yard TD pass to tie things up at 14. It's over on ESPN. Bye. Back to you guys. Hardest working woman in showbiz right there. And they're walking for the Bucks and Cavs last night. Here's Rudolph to throw and complete to McCleskey. Boy, you can see the explosive speed he has as he crashes down. Let's see where he's marking. Maybe shy of the first down. Holton Hill put the stick on him. Yeah, I've been impressed with Holton Hill. He's made four or five of those kinds of plays. He's showing some guys at the next level that he can tackle from the corner position. For one. No Justice Hill. It's J.D. King in there. Handoff. Give it to King. Oh, he's got the first down easily. A lot of east-west there, and not so much north-south. First down. Yeah, third and one, Todd Orlando, the defensive coordinator for Texas, decides that he's still going to play pass. He had two deep safeties, another guy deep in the middle of the field. He's not worried about the third and one. He's worried about James Washington and Aitman downfield here for big plays before the half. Using a third safety here right in the middle of the field. That's John Bonney. That's specifically to, to defend McCleskey and Aitman in the middle of the field. Justice Hill back in there, and they give it to him. Hill, wow, that hole open right up for him, and his helmet comes off. He's got the first down yard. It's Chris Boyd. Chris Boyd put the knock on him and off to come out for a play after losing his helmet. It's a gain of 11. John Bonney as well there. I think, I think they're gonna they're gonna continue to run the ball this Oklahoma State offense they will be patient in this kind of defense with two safeties you have to be able to run the football and that was a dangerous play there with Hill. Hand off to J.D. King 
with Hill being forced to come out after losing his helmet. And I love this. We hear from Mike Yersich, their offensive coordinator, and Mike Gundy. They're not going to panic. It's a tie ball game. Yeah, they would have liked to score more points, but they're going to continue to run the football. Of the balance. What are the Vegas odds you could have gotten that Oklahoma State would run the football more than pass it? Well, they come into the game averaging over 200 yards on the ground, Steve, and that's number one in the Big 12. Yeah, the, the passing game gets all the glitz and glamour, but the meat in this meal is on the ground for Oklahoma State. There's some more meat. Not enough beef right there. J.D. King on third and two couldn't get to the first down line. Great play by Gary Johnson, the linebacker. I think Oklahoma State with a decision to make here. Wouldn't be surprised if Mike Gundy kicks this ball. I think that's the right play. You don't want to give Texas any kind of momentum before halftime. They're so used to outscoring teams 80 to 20 in the first quarter. Right. I mean. So the number one offense in the country on fourth and one, they're going to punt the football. This possession, six running plays, just one passing play. The ball is in the air. Hempel Maps is backtracking and he catches it at the five yard line. Not sure why you want to catch that ball. Fair catch at the five. It's one of those you want to let bounce in the yes. end zone. Wait, so you can start at the 25? <laughs> Great idea. It's a 50 yard punt. Plenty of hitting. That one administered by Holt Hill. Anybody hear me at all? To uh, Austin, look at this uh, Texas defense. The Oklahoma State drive chart. Outstanding defense so far for Texas. Some of that one touchdown drive, they get a turnover. That's something that Todd Orlando talked with us about yesterday. Is if you give up yardage, but if you give up, don't give up the points in the big explosive plays. So the 50-yard punt pushes Texas back and has Sam Ellinger throwing from his own end zone. Able to escape the pressure. He'll try to make some moves and gets out to the 12-yard line, giving him some breathing room. Trey Flowers able to bring him down. I think the important thing here, backed up inside your own 15-yard line for Sam Ellinger, is if you can get some positive yards, great. Just don't turn the football over in this situation. Ellinger will keep it for a couple. Ramon Richards the stop. Under three to play here in the half. I think you, Tom Herman would be ecstatic to go to the locker room at halftime in a tie ball game, knowing that his team has really been battle tested in the second half of game. Two two overtime games against SC and Kansas State, and then last week as well. It's Ellinger again. He's short of the first down. I've let all this time click off. Yes. Right? Oklahoma State only has one timeout left. They had to burn two timeouts in the first quarter because of substitution issues. And Tom Herman's going to let it run all the way down and punt the football away. As that famous philosopher Chris Berman once said, that's why they play the games. Who would have ever expected a 7-7 game with two minutes left in the first half? Well, outside of the first game for Texas, right here against Maryland, this team has been in every single game. I just meant the low-scoring yep. nature right. of this game. Right. Well, people forget, you know, Texas defense, which has played better, they held uh, SC to 17 points in regulation. SC's a great offense. They held Oklahoma under under 30 points. They were the first defense to hold Oklahoma under 30 points, dating back to last year when Ohio State did it. So you're right, the Texas defense is, is slowly gaining confidence. And uh, let's say they feel very good about their young quarterback. And, Maybe Texas is starting to put it together. Well, I, I think the biggest thing for Texas is they've got to manage their inefficiencies on offense, right? They don't have the firepower up front on the offensive line. They're just trying to figure it out. Their defense is really where uh, their bread is buttered so far in this first half of the game of the season. Dylan Stoner is back at his 32, and Michael Dixon will punt from the six-inch line. Good look at what Dixon sees and he gets it away. What a punt that is. And a fair catch with no one in the neighborhood at the 22-yard line. It's a 62-yard punt. Take a look at today's All-State All-Hands-In-Play. Yeah, I think it's uh, Holden Hill for 
Texas defensively. They play a lot of two deep coverage, and that's to, to guard against the big plays downfield. And if you're good to do that, you need a corner that's going to be physical in the run game on the perimeter. And whether it's a run or whether it's a quick pass to the outside, Holton Hill made outstanding tackles on the outside on McCleskey and the backs all first half. Texas feels really good about both of their corners. If you're going to be tested here in the final 90 seconds, Hill out of the backfield. And Hill got just enough to trip him up and send him out of bounds. Chris Boyd is the guy with all the potential. And Hill is the guy who is the most consistent. But they feel good. The corners have done a very nice job, as you point out, covering and tackling. Absolutely. They just can't have a letdown here in the last two minutes of the first half. They played great so far. They just don't, they had a mental breakdown against Oklahoma late in the fourth quarter a week ago. You can't have those mental breakdowns here before that. Second and eight. He was Hill. There was one timeout left. Surprised to keep it on the ground here. I am, quite frankly. Uh, I, I don't think you have a ton of time here with just one timeout. They can't be content being tied at the half. It's uncharacteristic. I will give you that. It's uncharacteristic of, of Oklahoma State. But it is a third down, and if they don't get a first down here, maybe that's what Mike Gummy's thinking. And I would have kept the tempo off, and I would have gone for that first down as fast as I possibly could. I wouldn't be worried about Texas' offense. Third and five, they keep it on the ground with Justice Hill. <laughs> It seems like Hill has gotten every one of their third down conversions on the ground. And it probably shows how much they respect Texas's defense. This is really surprising. Man. Yeah, I, I don't know, Todd. I, I don't think that Oklahoma State's offense number one in the country is thinking about anything but trying to score as many points as possible. Plenty of time for Rudolph. They'll check it down to Hill. Gets across midfield, and now at the 47-yard line of Texas. I'm gonna think about being at the 47 with a minute. I mean, they ran off about 25 seconds. I'm thinking about before it. that third down. And the pressure comes. It's Hager. Gets him for the second time. Second sack of the afternoon for Brecken Hager. And the clock continues to tick down towards halftime. Yeah, and that's a stopper. That stops the drive here. He just, Brecken Hager goes right around Aaron Cochran, the left tackle. And you talk about this Texas defense giving up yards, but then they got to make a play when they have to. And that play ended the first half for Texas. And with three seconds left, Oklahoma State calls a timeout. Why wouldn't you, would, even after that sack, why wouldn't you call a timeout and take a, a shot to try to get in field goal range? Yeah, exactly, Todd. All they can do now is a Big Ben throw into the end zone before halftime. Coming up on the Capital One Halftime Report, first half recap of our game. And again, 7-7. Seven, seven. There are a ton of highlights in this game yeah. for 7-7. Seven, seven. Fifth ranked Wisconsin in action, only his scores and highlights. Kevin Nagandi and his gang are coming up the Capital One halftime report. Three seconds away. So, some interesting uh, play calling, strategy, clock management all down the stretch here, especially on the Oklahoma State side. Yep, and Oklahoma, Oklahoma State's going to have to make some adjustments offensively at halftime. They're, they're getting this too deep coverage predominantly from Texas. They're going to have to be continue to be patient, in my opinion, and run the football. But they've turned it over one time with Hill, uh, and then they, they haven't been able to, to punch it in, in in the red zone, and that's been the difference in the game. So we'll see if Rudolph takes a shot here. There are three defensive backs for Texas, all back standing at their five-yard line. Rudolph will heave one up in the air, and it is knocked around and batted down. Colin Johnson, the wide receiver, was there on defense to knock it away. All 6-6 six, six of him. 60 yeah. yards in the air for Rudolph. Why wouldn't you put your uh, tallest receiver out there? There he is, number nine. He misses it. And that, that's, that was perfectly executed there on the tip. Just nobody to bring it down for Oklahoma State. Raise your hand if you thought it would be 7-7 at the half. Nobody's raising their hand.
We'll send you to the studio for the Capital One Halftime Report after these messages. You're watching college football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers. Getting ready for the second half. Oklahoma State and Texas all tied at 7-all. The number one offense against the 64th ranked defense advantage defense. Yeah, this Texas defense came to play in this first half. They played a lot of two deep, Steve, and they played man under. Exactly what TCU and their strategy against Oklahoma State in their win. And they're running to the football in the run game. Seven, eight guys consistently to the uh, to the running backs, and that's why they've held this team to seven points in the first half. What's up, Patches? Show the people yeah. the patch. There you go. Nice. Oh, Very fashionable. <laughs> hey, how concerned is Oklahoma State? They could not expect to be in this position at this point in the game. Yeah, you know what? You got you to play. In the second half of games, this is Mason Rudolph, senior year. Everybody's talking about Oklahoma State and competing in the Big 12. You got to be in tight games like this to win this conference. And Texas will get the football to start the second half. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And for a game that is just 7 7, but plenty of highlights and things to talk about. Yeah, a lot of great plays uh, on both sides of the ball. Saw the touchdown run from Oklahoma State that opened up the scoring. But uh, tippy toe, unbelievable play on the sideline from John Burt. Five or six times it looked like he may have stepped out. And this led to a Sam Ellinger touchdown run inside the five. And that's where we stand 7 7 game. Let's do this second half action. Chris Warren in the backfield to the right of Sam Ellinger and hands it off to Warren and he crashes ahead for three. Ellinger has run for consecutive 100 yard rushing games coming into this one. As a runner here he's been held to two yards. He's got a lot, a lot of business to do here in the second half, try to get a third consecutive 100-yard rushing game. Here's Hemp Hill Maps. And it'll be just short of the first down marker. We talked a lot about the uh, Texas defense, but outside of that one long pass play for Texas to John Burke, Oklahoma State's defense has played outstanding football in this game. Ellinger keeping it. The fake to Warren, and everybody bought it. And Ellen gets the first down. 250 pound back, Steve. You got to respect him in short yard situations. And Oklahoma State sells out Calvin Bundage, a linebacker. Just crashes down, and it's an easy conversion for Ellen. Gain of eight, and Hemp Hill Maps had a good block out of the wide receiver spot. Give it to Chris Warren. Warren and Carter carrying the football today with no Kyle Porter for Texas Todd. I know they haven't scored a bunch only seven points this point but they've been balanced offensively when they've thrown the ball Ellinger has impressed me with his ball placement especially throwing on the run. Second and seven another pass Reggie comes up just short of the marker Chad Whitener made the stop Whitener is a senior from Mansfield Texas. Didn't get offered, did not get offered by the Longhorns. Said they didn't even look at me. He took some offense to that. He's gonna step up his play today. This time it is Warren. They respect the 250 pound back and he gets the first down yardage. Calvin Bundage brought him down, but not until it was too late. And play, Texas gotta play a little bit of small ball here in the second half. You know, first drive of the second half, they're just taking little chunks, staying ahead of the chain, staying out of third and six plus situations where they can use their big backs and run game to convert and short yardage. On the receiving end, good for 23. Number seven, Ramon Richards, the safety, has got to make that play right there. That has been his weak point in his career at Oklahoma State, is tackling in space. Cade Brewer had the good block, the two freshman tight end. Here's Warren. Good second and third effort. He'll pick up a yard of the play down to the 20. I think they wanted to run a reverse there, Steve, and Warren wasn't able to get the ball to Gerard Hurd. Gerard Hurd, the former quarterback, may have been a pass, but the penetration from Oklahoma State defensively prevented it. Quick throw out to Leonard. 
And we'll see where they spot. He has first down yardage. And we haven't even mentioned Shane Bouchelle all day. And that's because Sam or Ellinger has taken the position over. Bouchelle is still banged up, not 100%. I get over the effects of an ankle injury, and that's why Hurd is the third string quarterback, has been taking some snaps in practice. First and goal. And off is Warren. Stayed on his feet somehow. And gets to the five. Last week, Warren scored a touchdown and he needed the assist of his quarterback. He's 250 pounds, but Ellinger at 230 pushed him in to finish the Oklahoma drive. Here's the 11th play of the drive. Keep it on the ground. Bundage stops Warren at about the three-yard line. Texas seems like the hungrier team today, Greece. I don't know if Oklahoma State, maybe they took they te te Texas a little lightly coming in here. Hey, we're going on the road. We got the best offense. We're five and one. Look at us. But Texas seems like the hungrier team today. Well, they had an emotional loss last week. You, you knew there was going to be some fire, especially playing at home. <laughs> Ellinger, a couple steps to his left, now throws end zone. And off the fingertips of Duvernay. Well, there was a little crease for Duvernay. If that ball was thrown a little bit lower, or Duvernay were a little bit taller, could have been a conversion. Dubonair is only six feet tall. He's more of a speed guy. It's interesting they try to throw that route to him on the outside rather than a big body like Humphrey or Colin Johnson. There's Joshua rolling for a field goal. It's a 22-yard attempt. Field goals have been an issue. He's only 50% on the season. Five for ten. And from 22, no problem at all. 10.42 left here in the third quarter. Capped off by a 22-yard field goal. Texas has the lead. Could have been by seven. Specific grades, and, and today has not been his best day. A lot of receivers struggling to get open and separate, but you see the mental makeup. Smart guy, he's going to have a scheme adjustment going to the NFL. The accuracy, I think, is his best quality. The, the ball placement, arm strength, solid, pocket mobility. Better, a little bit better of an athlete than people give him credit for. All things to watch for here in the second half as the Cowboys open up first and 10 from their 25. And the handoff to Justice Hill. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage and then some. Pick up a four on the play. John Bonney made the stop you know todd i think uh, one of the things that i'm interested to see with mason rudolph they only have 12 or 15 plays that's what mike gundy told us and he's got a couple of different options on those plays but it's a very different system than the nfl off the play fake and again it was hager getting to rudolph rudolph able to get rid of the football that time Rolling on the field is an incomplete forward pass. No foul for intentional grounding. Number five was in the area. Wrecking Hager has been a nightmare for Rudolph. Yeah, it's been on Cocker in most of the of the day. But this time he comes from the right side. And they're trying to block him with a fullback, Britton Abbott. And that's going to be in the favor of Texas every single time. And Hager is affecting this game. Third and six. They get to see 44 coming again. Rudolph gets rid of it. Could not hook up with Tyron Johnson. It's and a bring up the fourth down. It's interesting to see. He doesn't always get pressure, Rudolph. And to, to watch him today, as the coverage has been good, and the pressure's eventually getting to him. He's struggling in terms of just where to go with the ball. And, and now that last throw, you can't tell me, Brian, that it didn't have something to do with the fact that he's taking a lot of hits today. Absolutely. I mean, every quarterback's different. That pressure, how it affects their mental clock and how fast they got to get rid of the ball, Todd. And it's coming out too fast for Mason right now. Fifth punt of the afternoon for Zach Siner. The last one went for 50 yards. Here's Hemphill Maps, and he's dropped down at the 26-yard line. We'll take a look at the pressure. Yeah, all games been consistent. Hager has... Uh, Got to the quarterback. This is a covered sack. There's nothing that the you know, second the offensive line can do right here. But Cochran gets beat right before halftime. That sealed that drive. And now Hager comes from the other side on a linebacker and the younger brother of Bryce Hager, the all 
All-star linebacker for the Baylor Bears. Making a name for himself today. And they forced the Cowboys in their third three and out of the afternoon. So Texas will take over now at their own 27. Tennille Carter, the true freshman, is behind Sam Ellinger. And Ellinger's on the run, and he'll be dropped. That goes as a sack for Jordan Brailford. If I were either one of these teams, I would not leave a left tackle on an island. It's the weakest spot on both of these offensive lines. Okafor has struggled, and Cochran has struggled. If you don't turn the protection that way or have a back help chip, then that side of the offensive line is going to struggle. 13-yard loss. Quick math. Makes it second and 23. Tom Hurd in motion with Carter, the ball carrier. And the helmet comes off of Derek Kerstetter. He'll sit out of play. Justin Phillips made the stop. Got, almost got a good look at Kerstetter's face. He is so young, we were told yesterday, he shaved twice in his whole life no. to this point. <laughs> Clean shaven. He doesn't he have to shave. beard? <laughs> I didn't see any beard there. Wow. Two times his whole life. Third and 20. Trying to set up the screen, nothing doing. Carter had no running room. A.J. Green came up for the stick. Yeah, any, any first down penalty or sack, negative yardage play for Texas offensively, and, and it's going to be a punt. They're just, they don't have those explosive players. Right here, you see a true freshman quarterback throwing to a true freshman back on a screen and had no chance. Nice play by A.J. Green. Dixon's at his goal line, punted away. Got some pressure from the outside, able to get it off. And Stoner fumbles the fair catch, fumbled it forward, and fell on top of it at the 33. 8.13 to go, third quarter from Austin. And the Longhorns with a three-point lead. College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers, is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And Chevy, the only brand to earn J.D. Power Dependability Awards for cars, trucks, and SUVs, two years in a row. Cooper's Old Time Barbecue Pit, which member of our crew, Grease, you think got the two and a half inch thick pork chop called the Big Chop? Uh, it was Daly, Paladino, what do you think? I'm gonna go with Vic. Vic? Yeah. All right. What are we gonna do to get a big chop up here in the booth? Well, they better hurry. There's 8.13 left in the third quarter. All well, you, you guys do is eat on this job. You gave me that burger in between two donuts a couple weeks ago. I couldn't eat that thing. Still got the leftovers, I'm sure. Here's Justice Hill as we send it back to Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Steve. And back to Louisville and Florida State and Lamar Jackson doing Lamar Jackson things. Just a beauty of a 51-yard run here. That would set up a touchdown. He also has 140 yards rushing so far, run for a score, and thrown for one. Louisville up on ESPN. Cassidy, thank you. Before the season started, you would have circled that game as one of the highlights right. on the schedule. One of the biggest games in the country. Didn't turn out to be that way on second down and four. Here's Justice Hill just across the line of scrimmage. Malik Jefferson came up to put the big hit on him. Well, I can't help but think, Steve, yeah. coming into this game, Texas felt like, well, all we hear about is this offense for Oklahoma State. They have showed up and played today against this dynamic offense. You can see them getting more and more confidence as this game has gone on. They are not afraid. Hills rush for 58 yards. On third down and three, they've, they've handed off the ball a lot on third down here. You'd think Rudolph would throw it in the air. Again, they keep it on the ground on third down. Just back to the line of scrimmage. Big defensive play by Gary Johnson. 
And it brings up fourth down. Gary Johnson's playing more in this game for starter Anthony Wheeler, and it's because of his versatility and ability to run sideline to sideline. They're playing a two-deep defense, Steve, and when you do that, offenses have to be able to run the ball, and Oklahoma State hasn't been able to do it consistently enough. And yet they keep going that on third down, running the football. You can't throw the ball into a two-deep stack defense with eight droppers, right? Mason Rudolph should be able to. <laughs> with that receiving core, that's all we heard about. Guy was Superman. It's exactly the way Gary Patterson Illegal substitution. played. substitution. Defense, 12 men in formation. Five yard That's penalty. Be first Results in a first down. Wow. Big play. You got the most explosive offense in the country on the field. You get a stop, and Tom Herman knows that one's going to hurt. You bail out the Cowboys offense right there. On a, on, a, on a punt return, right? Now, that's that's practice, right? That Part of that needs to be the coach, because that's practice, and, and getting those special teams units on the field. I... Mason Rudolph was, was going off the, uh, off the field. He thought that the drive was over. I don't know if he was going to go back and get taped up or something, but he had to run all the way back. He ran 65 yards. Field. <laughs> This he is great. Like he was a little gimpy there. Hey, wait a second, two. We're going to need you back in the game. Two seconds, one second on the play clock. And so a whole lot of confusion. Oklahoma State. And Oklahoma State First has to half. spend a timeout there. Timeout on the field. Mason Rudolph. Just when you it's thought. Wind sprints. <laughs> Get in there quick. And then they need the timeout anyway. Just over an hour away from Syracuse and Miami. That'll be very interesting based on what happened a week ago. Then tonight, all eyes will be on 19th ranked Michigan and number two Penn State. A whiteout in Happy Valley. Here's Justice Hill, the ball carrier. He's across midfield. Gets happy. Second down and five. One change for this Oklahoma State offense up front. They lost another offensive lineman. Tevin Jenkins hurt their right guard. And in comes Junior Malayi, number 66 at right guard. And they've struggled to run the ball consistently behind it. Quick throw out to Dillard. Stoner has the first down. He stopped by P.J. Locke along with Brandon Jones. Would you be surprised if I told you James Washington does not have a catch since the first quarter? I would. I would, but, you know, credit, credit Texas defensively. They have played this 2 deep defense, and they're playing man under. He's not had a whole lot of looks. Todd Orlando is not going to let James Washington beat them in this game. You're right. They watched a lot of that TCU tape. You would think everybody in the country would yeah. watch the TCU tape. Hager able to bring down Hill. With five minutes left here in quarter three. And, it's, and, it's, and I think it's smart. Put the game on the offensive line. That's the weakest part of this Oklahoma State offense is up front. They've had injuries. Crabtree had a turf toe. Their right tackle. He's the best player. Now the right guard's out. Make those guys beat you up front running the football, and they haven't been able to do it. Second and nine. Abbott and Fine Feuillaki, the two cowboy backs, are in there in front of Justice Hill. Recovered by Hill. What a break for the Cowboys. Hager got there to Rudolph. Hager's been all over Rudolph. Rudolph, he never got this ball. He's he's trying to hand it off. He never secures it. I don't think, even though he was down there, he didn't have control of the ball. So I think that's a good call by the official. He's down there, but I don't know that he controlled it. Heads up play by Hill. Chris Boyd is down for Texas. Boy, we've seen these two teams self-destruct at times. We're going to take a look at that to fumble to see if Rudolph was down. As Boyd's helped off the field. Yeah, Texas can't afford to lose Boyd. All of a sudden, Washington and Aitman become much more valuable if Boyd's out of the game. 
Just the fundamentals, the focus and fundamentals, and, and Mason Rudolph doesn't secure that ball. Lucky it wasn't a turnover, but it's going to stall this drive. Now you got third and a country mile. Brecken Hager has been a huge factor yep. in this game on defense for Texas. So without Chris Boyd, he's not going to be able to play on this snap for sure. But Devontae Davis, a junior out of Miami, uh, who's a big player as well, 6'3", 200 pounds, played sparingly this year, but he's going to have to come in. But it's not as big a deal, Steve, because they're having those corners play too deep underneath, right? It's the safeties that are having to play the deep routes, and the corners are really having to play in the run game up around the line of scrimmage. One of those safeties, Brandon Jones, he was beaten by the tight end of Oklahoma, Mark Andrews, for the game-winning touchdown a week ago. So they've come under some pressure. But they've been much better today. Yes. The communication in the back end was a point of emphasis for Todd Orlando all week in practice. And between Deshaun Elliott, Brandon Jones, John Bonney, who's played that, that center field position, most of this game, it's been excellent. That's been the biggest surprise today, really. I mean, Todd Orlando talked about it. He said, I don't know that we can cover the way that TCU covered when we were talking about trying to implement that plan. But so far, so good. After review, the Oklahoma State player recovered the ball at the 46-yard line. It's going to be third down. So they're going to say that uh, Rudolph was down there before Brecken Hager put his helmet on the ball, but it's still going to bring up a third and 14 or 15. If you're just joining us, you're surprised by the score, and you wonder about that Oklahoma State touchdown. Even that wasn't a Mason Rudolph touchdown pass. It was a J.D. King touchdown run. As you would expect, Rudolph has thrown at least one touchdown pass in every game of the season. Nothing doing tonight and today so far. Third and 17. So it's a loss of seven as Rudolph was ruled down by contact at the 46 of Texas. Rudolph, good protection. Throws on the money and dropped. Jalen McCleskey, I think he had six. Flat out dropped the football. Fourth down. Absolutely, he had six. They're going to clear outside with James Washington. And this is Jalen McCleskey's route. This is his bread and butter. He runs it perfectly. And it's just a focus, right? Mason Rudolph drops a snap, easy snap, and on back-to-back -back plays, Oklahoma State's offense self-destructs. Clearly beat the nickel, P.J. Locke. And that'll smart. Armani Foreman is back at the seven. And that punt bounces into the end zone for a touchback. Todd McShay. Yeah, some injury news down here, unfortunately, for Texas. Their wide receiver, the freshman, Reggie Hemphill Maps, is out for the rest of the game. Saw him limping in. It's a knee injury, so he'll be gone. And he's been the go-to receiver so far today for the Texas Longhorns. Yeah, and he's also tied their punt returner, so keep an eye point. on that. Amani Foreman will come in for him. Foreman has really slipped down the depth chart yep. this season. The Texas, so a chance to make an impact in the return game. Texas with the lead and the football. Elliger to throw. Finds Colin Johnson for his second catch. Trey Flowers came up to make the tackle. I think Texas really needs to get little Jordan Humphrey involved in this game. He's probably the most consistent receiver, in my opinion, and uh, he has not had a catch so far in this game. See the numbers on Ellinger. And second and five. Whoa, big stick on Warren. Darian Daniels came up, but Justin Phillips there as well. Yeah, Phillips from the linebacker spot. He's a concerted, converted safety coming up and playing that linebacker position. He's gotten better and better every week. Glenn Spencer, their defensive coordinator, says he's been the most impactful player from that position that they've had on this defense. Son has come out on third down and five. Ellinger was looking rum the whole way there. Able to stay on his feet momentarily and then drop for a loss. Fourth down. Whitener got there. Time to time. There are times where 
Sam Ellinger will look like he's lost out there. As a true freshman, that's going to happen, right? And we were talking with Tim Beck, their offensive coordinator, and he says, you know, he'll get on the phone and he'll say, I just didn't like it. I didn't like it. So I asked Tim Beck, how many times did he say, I didn't like it in the course of a game? And he said, too many right now. <laughs> he just doesn't see the field as well as a, as a more experienced player, and that's to be expected. And the puck from the 10. Stoner. Again, it looks like some running room in front of him. Alex for the fair catch. Yeah, Dixon's been their, their best offensive player in this game. No question. Could have an NFL future. Kickoff here, speaking of which, kick off your week seven of the NFL tomorrow. ESPN's countdown. Sunday NFL countdown crew. They'll get you all set up. Get you ready for the week. And then Monday Night Football is a dandy this week. How about the Eagles? The Redskins will be in town. Coverage begins Susie and the gang at 6 p.m. Also available in Spanish on ESPN2. Hola, John Sutcliffe, wherever you're watching. Chris Boyd back in the game. Just out for one uh, one snap. It's a good sign for Texas. See Rudolph's numbers here in the second half. That's not an oddity. That's a trend. Here's Justice Hill. The first half, second half splits on Mason Rudolph really stand out, Greece. First half this season, 16 touchdowns, one interception. And Rudolph in the second half this season, three touchdowns, three interceptions. And he is certainly not used to playing from behind. Again, the only time they've trailed all season in the second half was in their one loss to TCU. Second and five. Give it a hill. He is greeted in the backfield. Charles O'Menahue came up to meet him and beat him. He just beats uh, Crabtree, the right tackle. And right now, Texas is more physical up front than Oklahoma State's offensive line. And Mike Gundy told us this week, he said, athletically, this is the best front seven that we're, we will have seen so far this season. And Tom Herman's leaning on the best part of his defense. Third mate getting loud. Here comes a late blitz. Rudolph gets it away, and there's a flag. Holton Hill, I was going to say excellent coverage. It is until the flag comes out. It was locking down on James Washington. Well, he had great coverage of man, man to man. Did he get there too early? Pass interference, number five, defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic, Hard. first down. That's a good defensive play. I'm sorry, that's a great defensive play. He's the best receiver in college football, and he's man-to-man -man all over the field, and Halton Hill played it perfectly. That's a bad call by the official. They just replayed it up on the jumbotron, as you might expect, the reaction from the crowd. And that was the first time, Steve, that Texas defensively got out of that cover two safe look. They brought a pressure and left man-to-man -man on the outside. They would have got a conversion on third down, saved the penalty. Second straight series with a key penalty against the Longhorns. Hand off, it's Justice Hill has some running room. He's got first down yardage and then some. As we come up with the final half minute of the third quarter, penalties have been an issue for Texas today. Six of them for 59 yards, whereas Oklahoma State has yet to commit a foul. I always think that pass interference penalty needs to be, make me throw the flag, right? If there's any question at all, don't throw it. Let the kids play. I would agree. See if they get another play away. In the third quarter. Sure, why not? Rudolph will take the play action, get it out to McCluskey. He's able to hang on to this one. And P.J. Locke brings him down. And that is the end of the third quarter. Tenth-ranked Oklahoma State. They find themselves trailing by a field goal. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Take a look at today's college football rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Yeah, you see Oklahoma, Oklahoma State back in the top 10. Oklahoma State is uh, on the ropes here, on the road at Texas. Ohio State, Penn State next week. Yeah. That'll be fun. Second down and four. P.J. Locke on Justice Hill.
that, uh, you had Georgia ahead of Penn State, right? I did have Georgia ahead of Penn State, yes. You get what TCU at four? Uh, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, I'll go with TCU at four. There's a lot of football left to play, but I'm not so sure they get through the uh, Big 12 schedule on the stage. Pressure from the left. They run to the right with Justice Hill. And he has first down yardage. We'll take the people behind the curtain a little bit. I said to you, hey, is this an elimination game for the Big 12 championship game? You know, can yeah. you get a two-loss team in the championship game? And I, I didn't think so, but I, I think a lot so. of good points. Yeah, I think so. And it'll hook up to McCluskey down on the 10-yard line. It's been one of the best plays for Oklahoma State all year. You know, against Pittsburgh, they exploded. McCluskey had three touchdowns on this play. Give him credit for going back to it. And Rudolph trusts him. Gain of 23, and that was after that big drop. Here's Chris Lacey trying to hurdle. And the whistles and the signal before the ball came out, they can get a first down. Yeah, Lacey Only on the field, first down, the runner was out of bounds, the ball came loose. Trying to reach for the pylon. Oh, I don't know about that. Take a look at that. He did not step out of bounds, Steve, and that ball definitely came out. It was definitely a fumble. Right, I'm Take right here. I'm like 10 yards away. I, I really didn't think he was out of bounds. I thought the that ball ball's kind of ticked it, back in. Oh, that ball was oh, rolling on the field. Unless the, the tip of the ball, the ball Todd, out of okay. hit the out of bounds. The one and a half yard line. The previous play is under further review. It was definitely a fumble, and he was definitely inbounds. Lacey was. The question is, did the tip of the ball when it landed on the ground, touched the out-of-bounds strike. Dylan Stoner was there. Wow. There he is. He stays inbounds. Left foot's in, right foot's in. Now the ball's out. So where does it land? Wow. We're going to have to blow that up and look at that. The ruling on the field is important. It was ruled out-of-bounds, but that is much closer, I think, than that official even thinks. See if you guys can freeze it right when that ball hits the. Wow. It's right in between. It's right in between his legs. Deshaun Elliott goes off his foot. And there's Stoner trying to recover it. Interesting decision. Critical part of the field. Crucial point of the game. It looks like the ball, Steve, comes down. Does it hit Elliott? I thought it I did it hits briefly. the ground. Yeah, I, I think it hits the ground right in between his legs, and in the tip of the ball may have been on that white line, but we can't really tell definitively enough because it was in between his legs and we can't see. I don't think there's conclusive enough evidence to overturn that call. After review. Oklahoma State recovered the football at the one-yard line. The first down was made of the Oklahoma State's ball, first and goal at the one-yard line. So Dylan Stoner falling on yep. top of that football at the one. They, yep. they keep the ball and get the first down. Yeah, get the first down, which is big. You know, that's... This is the area of the field where they I like Justice Hill to be in the Wildcat. They take Mason Rudolph and put him out of the receiver. That's how they're lined up right now. First and goal. Puna Ford able to eat up that huge space in the middle. That snap kind of surprised Justice Hill. Came up on him fast. They've been going to that Wildcat recently. They have some red zone issues. They're going to do it again. Second and goal. Wildcat to Hill. Won't get there. Maybe even a loss. Puna Ford got him from behind. Third down and goal. Puna Ford is wrecking the middle of this offensive line for Oklahoma State. We mentioned Tevin Jenkins out. His backup in. Crabtree's limping on a turf toe. They have not been able to push this Texas defensive line off the ball. So Rudolph comes back into the game. Third and goal. Our cameras are shaking. Defense by Holton Hill. 
on Marcel Aitman. And it's fourth down. Mason Rudolph missed this read. He had a wide open touchdown to the Cowboy back, Fanui Fuyaki. He's going to come out. Here he is on the outside. Mason never goes through the progression. He tries to force it to Aitman, and he had a layup to the tight end. Trying to hold him to a field goal. Matt Amendola from 19 yards away for the tie. And a line drive is through. And with 12.31 to play here in the fourth, we're tied at 10. Texas will get the football. We'll see what Sam Ellinger could do. You see Jenna, Sam's mom. It's well-known story about the Ellinger family. That Sam's dad, Ross, passed away in March of 2013. Dying after participating in the escape from Alcatraz Triathlon. And in essence, Sam had to be the man of the house in the yeah. eighth grade with a couple of younger siblings. And you know, you can speak from some experience. You got a chance to talk with Sam about that and that indelible mark that his death of his dad leaves on him. Yeah, I mean, my mom died when I was 12 years old, and I knew how it affected me and how it affected me when I played football in college. And I always remember playing for her, and I asked Sam how it affected him. And, you know, he grew up, and his dad loved Texas football. They came to the games ever since he was a little boy. He saw the picture of him with the horns like this. And he said, you know, Dad, we're here together. And he thinks about him every single game. Every time he comes out on the field, he kneels down and talks to his dad. And it's a special bond. Here's Chris Boyd trying to return the kick, staying on his feet. Boyd, the aggressor. He was knocked out by Matt Amendola, the kicker. And so good field position for Ellinger in Texas. But you come that far, right? You come that far, and, and, and he knew it was his dad's dream to see him play college football. And, and I just told him, listen, man, he's watching you. He's proud of you. And uh, he goes out and plays for two people, for himself and, and for his dad every single time uh, he puts that uniform on. It's, it's one of the great things about college football, right? You get these stories of tragedy. And kids like Sam Ellinger that turn a tragedy into a positive and playing the way he plays in honor of his dad. The first word about Ellinger, just the toughness. And, uh, and that's a rough, that's a tough upbringing. That's tough to deal with. It's the hardest thing any kid has to go through. I, right? I can't, ima I can't imagine. I can't imagine what that's like. On the ground, Chris Warren. You got to believe, Steve, you get into the fourth quarter, right? And the battle-tested team in the fourth quarter is not Oklahoma State. It's Texas. They played two, two overtime games. They've won one and lost one. And they, they've played a lot of football in the fourth quarter with the game on the line. Ellinger to throw. And he was throwing that one away. Burt was in the neighborhood. Second down. <laughs> Part of that fourth quarter magic is, is believing in your quarterback. And it hasn't been a, a great day for Sam Ellinger. 200 yards through the air, 90 of that was on the one pass to Burke. Uh, but if, if your team believes that you're going to make a play at the quarterback position in the fourth quarter, that's a big advantage. Second and 10, they're across midfield. Ellinger looked to his right briefly and will throw to his left. Could not hook up with Dorian Leonard, A.J. Green had the coverage and the crowd looking for a flag. Well, this crowd remembers the penalty they called on Holton Hill that kept the last drive alive for Oklahoma State. And there was a lot more contact here from A.J. Green than there was for Holton Hill. He's got his hands on him. Just call it, call it fairly both ways. Call it the same both ways. Still no penalties on Oklahoma State today. And we're under 12 to play in the fourth quarter. Third and ten, chance to stay on the field. Ellinger's throw. A.J. Green had the coverage, looking to hit Leonard again and could not connect. Boy, and that's a play you got to make if you're Leonard. That ball's thrown on time, accurately, in a place where you can make a physical catch and get a first down in the fourth quarter of a tie ball game. You've got to make that play. We talk about Tim Beck says the wide receivers are the, the best part of this offense. They haven't played that way today. Three straight incompletions 
for Ellinger. Diller Stoner will run up, and that'll bounce out of the end zone. We expected it to be close. Didn't expect it to be this low score. You're watching College Football on ABC, presented by K Jewelers. We're not just back, we're back with the Pacific Life game summary. Yeah, it's been uh, the story of the game is Texas defense holding Oklahoma State's number one ranked offense in college football in check for this game. Little shovel pass to Johnson. And he'll pick up about five on the play. Yeah, where are the eye-popping numbers? Even Hill, the top rusher in the Big 12, held to 84 yards. Yep. Washington, the top receiver in the Big 12, 32 yards. And they've held this offense under 300 yards of total offense when last week against Baylor they had 740-plus yards of offense. Quick screen out to the left, a stoner. He has first down yard as this explosive Oklahoma State offense went more than 37 minutes without points until picking up that that chip shot field goal that has tied the game at 10 all. And I think it's been a couple of things, Steve. It's been Ben, don't break, have two safeties, don't let James Washington and McCluskey beat you down the field. And then this front seven, led by Puna Ford, have really owned the line of scrimmage in the run game. Hand off to J.D. King, able to squirt through, and he has first down yardage, carrying a whole lot of burnt orange on top of him. The question will be, as this game wears on into the fourth quarter, can that front seven for Texas withstand this running attack, right? So they're getting a little bit tired, don't have a whole lot of depth, and back-to-back -back runs with good yardage on the ground. Ten yards for King there, his longest run of the game. He has the lone touchdown today for the Cowboys. Give it to King again. Nothing doing there, right into the middle of that Texas defense led by Malik Jefferson. Watching game day this morning, uh, and they have the McShay scroll on the bottom line. Oh, is that what it's called? Among the uh, linebackers. Todd, you got him number two at the linebacker position? I agree, so you'll get a scroll one there. <laughs> yes. He's, he's a really good athlete, continues to develop. And uh, I've seen a lot of improvement from him. He's to continue to get better taking on blocks and with his eye discipline. He's a really talented athlete. Second and ten. Longhorn Nation wants to know why he's not number one at the position. That's what everyone else. <laughs> so he gave him a C plus and something time. <laughs> curve on the curve. Here's Hill trying to get outside. Bring up a third down. Chris Boyd ran him out. How many more stops can Texas get defensively, right? You know that this offense is just waiting to break open. Big third down here, third and five. A little over nine minutes left in this game. They've been running out of this spot all game. You expect the pass. We'll throw for it this time. And it is juggled and dropped. Nearly caught by Aitman, nearly intercepted by Boyd, and then another opportunity for Texas there. Fourth down. And it's just a force here from Mason Rudolph. He wanted to get the ball to Aitman, but he's double covered on the outside. You're going to see Boyd underneath in a 2 deep defense. And that play never had a chance. Rudolph is lucky it wasn't intercepted, and Elliott could have got it on the deflection and taken it back for six points. Zach Sider on the punt at his own 31. The short kick. Foreman will run up into traffic. And the fair catch. 35-yard punt. Texas will take over at their own 19. Eight and a half to play in the fourth quarter in Austin. We're all tied at tens. On ABC, number 18, Michigan State hosting Indiana in the battle for the old brass platoon. Again, on ABC. Steve, Brian, Todd. Cassidy, thank you.
That's the beauty of the, getting the early game, the early start. You get to enjoy all the afternoon yeah. and night action. Love it. They got that holding call on Cade Brewer, the tight end. He was blocking on the weak side. He's a true freshman. And that was the reason why that hole opened up so big for Warren. Nullified a 16-yard game. Seventh penalty of the day against Texas. Again, zip off for the Cowboys. Sam's going to run with it and not get back to the line of scrimmage. Darian Daniels making the stop. And there's, as we said, there's been three or four of these drives for Texas where they've started on first down and had a penalty or a negative play, a sack, something like that, and they just can't recover from that. Most teams in college football on first and 20 would throw the ball to get back to a man's work down the distance, but Texas just running it with Ellinger. Second and 19. That's Brewer in motion top of your screen. Ellinger off the play fake, rolling to his right, got pressure, and had a man, could not connect. Colin Johnson could not hang on. Trey Flowers came up to apply the pressure on Ellinger. Well, if Ellinger would have had time, Steve, on the outside, he had Duvernay with a double move outside. This is Johnson coming on the over route, but on the outside, he had Duvernay for a touchdown, but he didn't have enough time to throw the football. Here's Duvernay on the outside, number six. He's going to come down, stutter, and then go right by. That was a touchdown to take the lead in the game. Well, Darius Williams slipped down on the coverage and doesn't get burnt for it. Here's third and 19 in a dangerous neighborhood for Texas. Hello again. Play clock shows zeros. Play a game. Offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still third down. That dangerous neighborhood just got worse. And I know it's, you know, Sam Ellinger has burst onto the scene, you know, with his legs and, and his competitiveness and his fire. Uh, but there are parts of his game where he is still really raw and inexperienced and keeping his eye on the play clock, keeping his eye downfield for big play opportunities. Those are two areas he needs to get better. Texas has just 74 yards of offense here in the second half. Yeah. Ellinger will throw incomplete to Brewer. He'll get out to the 19, not even close to first down yardage. A.J. Green had the coverage. And Texas dangerously will hand the football back to Oklahoma State. How long can they keep Oklahoma State so explosive on offense out of the end zone? Yeah, yeah. And, and their defense. Their defense has been on the field uh, way too much in this second half. Asking a lot of Todd Orlando and his group. Been asking a lot of Michael Dixon the whole game. Great punt. Great punt. Oh. And it's going to get even better as Stoner lets it bounce. Wow, you have a punt that far. Stoner has got to catch that football. It's a 66-yard punt. <laughs> the number one offense in the country. With the ball, we come back. Hey, Michael Dixon, smile. You're the star of the show. Look at that. 50-yard average. Just hit a 66-yarder to pin back the Cowboys. Affleck. Time for the Affleck trivia question. Who are the only Texas quarterbacks to pass for 275 yards and rush for 100 yards in multiple games? Hmm. Ooh, multiple. That's intriguing. Yeah. There's James Washington just trying to find any way to get the ball in his hands. Chris Boyd forced him out. I really think Mason Rudolph, they got to put the game in his hands. Let him throw the ball. I know it's a two deep man under defense, but that's the best part of your of your offense. Get James Washington, the Plesky, Aitman, the ball in the passing game. That's Washington's first catch since the first quarter. Throwing down the field. has got a man. The coverage broke down. It's Marcel Aitman. Aitman rumbling down to the 20-yard line. Boy, Brandon Jones was back there at the safety position. Last week, he got beat in the Oklahoma game, gave up the winning touchdown, number 19 right there. He just gets turned around there, tries to flip his hips. And like I said, put the ball in Mason Rudolph's hands, your best player, just throw it up. Let him go get it, even 6-4, and they get a big play. 67-yard reception. You can get a flag, pass interference, anything. A lot of good things can happen there. Here's McCluskey for a half a yard. 
Coming up on six minutes to play here in regulation. This Texas defense and Todd Orlando talked about communication, communicating better in this game. That was not a communication issue. It was just a fundamental issue. And Jones tried to flip his hips, and you got to stay up when that ball's in the air in the secondary. Already in field goal range from Matt Amendola. Interesting to see how they play the clock here. Hill on the left side. Has some running room, and he's stopped at the 13-yard line. The saw, Sean Elliott was there. We saw Oklahoma State when they got down here last time, Steve, right? They get inside the five-yard line. They try with the Wildcat with Justice Hill. They weren't able to punch the ball in the end zone. We'll see if Texas can bow up here again. Third and three. Gonna keep it and he won't get there. I think he's two yards short of the first down. Malik Jefferson wasn't buying it. He wants to go for it, of course. Kick, kick the field goal. You gotta kick. Texas has done nothing offensively. Points are at a premium. And that's the right decision by Mike Gundy to kick the field goal. And I asked Gundy before the game, I said, How far are you comfortable with with your kicker? He said, uh, well, he can kick 57. He goes, I'm just worried about the 20, 30 yard ones. Oh, jeez. Here's Amendola from 29 yards away. Try to give the Cowboys the lead. Two to snap and they get it down. That field goal is on the way and is no good. Amendola misses from 22. Wow. I blame Todd. <laughs> you get that big play down the field to aim at exactly what you want, and again, back-to-back -back drives. Red zone offense, snake bites. Oklahoma State and Tom Herman's right where they want to be. Affleck trivia question. Who are the only Texas quarterbacks to pass for 275 yards and rush for 100 yards in multiple games? Well, Sam Ellinger's on the list now, and his two favorite Longhorns growing up, they're the other two, Vince Young and Colt McCoy. Long pass. Long in terms of distance, the ball traveled is complete to Devin Duvernay. That's a big time throw. That was a great throw from the opposite hash on an out route. That's an unbelievable throw from Sam Ellinger. A great way to start this critical drive in the fourth quarter. Got nine. Second and one. they got to stay ahead of the chains in this drive. No penalties, no negative yardage plays. That's been the key when they've moved the ball. Ellinger will hand it off to Chris Warren. So that's not staying ahead of the chains. That's a big loss. Darian Daniels comes in. Daniels had a fine game as well. It's hard to call plays when you can't run the ball between the tackles. And Tom Herman knows it's a little bit of smoke and mirrors for Texas on the offensive side so far this year. But they need to find something. This game is here for the taking for the Longhorns. Third and two. Ellinger going to throw for it, and it was dropped. Cade Brewer had it, and then he lost it. Rodarius Williams had good coverage on the play. It's, it's the little things, right? If you're going to throw this ball here, you have to throw it low, Steve. Don't put your receiver exposed with your ribs like that. Throw it on the ground so he can fall to the ground, catch it, and get the first down. It's the, those little accuracy things that Sam Ellinger has to continue to get better at. Whitener helped out with Williams, making it a Brewer sandwich. Here's the star of the game, Michael Dixon for Texas. His 10th punt. And the fair catch at the 20 for Dylan Stoner. Just joining us, the key play was the turnover. Puna Ford forcing the issue. And then... One of the great sideline dances you've ever seen. Man. How does John Burt not step out of bounds? Sam Elliott banging into the end zone for the touchdown.
what's amazing to me is Oklahoma State had the early lead. They marched down the field 96 yards like a hot knife through butter. Yep. There was no reason to not expect they could do that the rest of the game. Todd Orlando makes the adjustments with his defense. First down and 10. Justice Hill. Gary Johnson the stop and Malcolm Roach. I'm going right back at these safeties for Texas. Aitman or Washington, take your pick. You got to think Brandon Jones, his confidence is a little bit shook on the back end at safety, giving up two big plays in the last two games. I'd test him again if I were Oklahoma State. Second and ten. Hand off to Justice Hill, has a little bit of running room, and it'll bring up a third down. Two and a half to play. And again, you think about a field goal, and Matt Amendola has to still be thinking about the miss from 22. Yes. That's still got to be in his head. Amendola has had five misses this season, three of them coming inside the 30-yard line, including that last one, which could be critical. The play of the game right now, if Texas can get off the field. So important, timeout has been called. Oklahoma State takes the timeout. Their second. 2.04 to go in, let's say, regulation time. Tied at 10. Back for third down and four out of the Oklahoma State timeout. We'll see what they come up with trying to stay on the field in a 10-10 game here in Austin. 2.04 to play in the fourth quarter. This is a pressure look from Texas defensively with man-to-man -man on the outside. Rudolph looking left the whole way. And it's a miscommunication trying to hook up with Chris Lacey. Chris Boyd, the coverage. Fourth down. You had exactly what you wanted if you were Mason Rudolph. You got the blitz on the weak side. It was picked up beautifully by Justice Hill. Watch him pick up the linebacker. This play, you got to throw the ball on the outside. And make a play. Give credit Texas defensively for bringing up a big stop. And now they're going to get the football back with two timeouts and plenty of time. Just the third three and out for the Cowboys. It's a low punt that will take an Oklahoma State bounce. And Texas will start at their own 25 with three timeouts left and a minute 46 to go in a 10-10 game. Coming up tonight, 19th ranked Michigan. It's number two Penn State. 7.30 Eastern here on ABC, streaming live on the ESPN app. Penn State is 15-1 since their loss to Michigan last season. Coach Franklin saying that loss gave us a shot in the gut. See how they respond tonight. Should be an unbelievable atmosphere tonight in Happy Valley. Hey, Texas has seen this story before. They've had a lot of moral victories this season. Here they are, tied at 10 with the 10th ranked team in the country. And Sam Ellinger has the football in his hands. Under pressure, able to slip away from it. Ellinger now able to throw and complete. Colin Johnson needed all of his 6'6 frame to bring it down, but it's small yardage. Yeah, and he does, doesn't give up on any play. Sam Ellinger extending plays, just give him an opportunity on the sideline. And great job by Johnson keeping his toes in. Second and three. Ellinger again trying to go sideline. He did catch it, but he was already out of bounds. I'm Oklahoma State and Glenn Spencer defensively. I am going to continue to bring pressure on Sam Ellinger. Not seeing the pressure real well, not seeing the blitzes, and especially when you can drop off in zone, and the zone pressure might get him to throw the ball to you in an interception. Texas 3 of 15 on third down conversions in the game. Chris Warren is split out as a wide receiver all the way down bottom of your screen. Ellinger with plenty of time to throw. Cox and fires, and it's incomplete. Gerard Hurd had it, and Rodarius Williams makes sure he couldn't hang on to it. There is a flag down. Yeah, they're going to get Okafor the left tackle for a hold. Holding, number 78. Offense, that penalty is declined. Fourth down. A minute 26 left. 
So they decline that, brings up fourth down. and Third consecutive three and out by Texas, and the offense from both sides has disappeared here. Yeah, you got to give credit to these defenses too, Steve. I mean, I, you know, we've talked a lot about Texas defensively, but uh, Oklahoma State, well, granted, Texas not very explosive offensively, playing with a true freshman quarterback, but uh, they have played well on the defensive side and kept them in the game. Welcome to the Michael Dixon Show. What happened there? So hesitation. I, I, yeah, I thought I heard a whistle too. On a bounce, Dylan Stoner is dropped at the seven-yard line. Cassidy Hubbard will say you after a 63-yard punt. Well, Steve putting a cap on Louisville and Florida State Cardinals with a 34-yard field goal attempt, and Blanton Creaky gets to go. Louisville wins 31-28, and Florida State falls to two and four on the season. Steve, Brian, Todd, back to you guys. All right, Cass, good finish there. Coming up on a thrilling ending here. Mike Gundy was hot. Let's listen to see if there's a whistle. Absolutely, there was a whistle, and everybody stopped playing. And Mike Gundy has a point. He's hot over there because that ball gets down on the ground. Now it's on their seven-yard line. And that play should have been replayed with an inadvertent whistle. And Dixon hesitated as well. I mean, of course, even when he lets it go, it turns out to be a great punt. Mason Rudolph with a lot of time throwing down the field. Sideline intercepted or not. Knocked away. Brandon Jones very nearly with the play of the game on the coverage of James Washington. Oh, you feel for Brandon Jones. He gives up the big play to Aitman. You just got to continue to focus on that ball. You can't worry about getting hit or running into somebody. Give up your body, catch the ball, and then that could have been the game winner right there. You can attempt to field goal right away. Great shot of Tom Herman in the background. His immediate reaction. A big time force for Mason Rudolph. You gotta be smart in this situation. Minute seven left. On the ground at Justice Hill. Hill will get out of bounds, but he has first down yardage and gives him some breathing room. The clock stopped with 59 seconds left. During the A gain of 14. Again, Texas has all three timeouts remaining. And the clock management will be interesting. And Matt Amendola, just joining us, just missed from 22 yards away. Hill is over 115 yards rushing on the afternoon. Ball to 20. Rudolph again on the ground at J.D. King. And how about this strategy, keeping it on the ground? You know what? I think, you know, when you're an offensive coordinator and you call a pass play on first down on, on this drive and you see your quarterback throw it into double coverage, should have been intercepted and could have been the game over, all of a sudden you call the game differently, right? Even though it's Mason Rudolph and he's a Heisman Trophy candidate, all these things, when you see a quarterback do that, I, you can't help but call the game differently. And I think they're playing for overtime right now, to be totally honest with you. That's quite a statement. In itself, and I'm with you, I agree. Second and two. Number one offense in the nation. Playing for overtime at Texas. They hand the ball off again to J.D. King. Mm -hmm. Sure, Texas should use a timeout. They got three of them. Absolutely. I mean, it's third and short. You could play this either way. You got an injured player down on the field, looks like. The left guard, Marcus Keys. And that should cost Oklahoma State their yeah. last time out. Boy, if they lose Marcus Keys, they've already lost the right guard, Tevin Jenkins, and you got Nalei, a backup, playing in, in place of him. Brad Lundblade, the starting center, is hurt. And now if you got Keys, you'd have the three guys on the interior of this Oklahoma State offensive line out in this game. And that goes a long way to explaining what's happened to Rudolph in this offense here today. Well, it's a big reason why they didn't beat TCU, right? They didn't have Zach Crabtree, and they, they were struggling with, with injuries up front, and they couldn't protect Mason Rudolph. And uh, that's been their struggle all season long. And Keyes doesn't look like he's moving at all right now, Steve. Looking at the back of his neck and seeing how oh, he's going to get up. That's good.
So now you got third and one here. You think if Texas is able to stop him, you see Deontay Noel. Grace, Texas, we just double checked. Texas called a timeout there with the injured Oklahoma State player on the field. Wouldn't think you'd need to use that, but with 36 yep. seconds left, I don't know how many timeouts you can use. Yeah, if Oklahoma State gets a first down here, then I think it's it's a decision time for, for Mike Gundy. I don't know why you wouldn't let one of the best quarterbacks in all of college football at least attempt a couple of passes to at least get in field goal range for Amendola. And I get that Amendola probably is shaking a little bit after missing a 29-yarder, but he did tell Todd McShay before the game that he's good from 50-plus. Give him a shot. Why not? What, what's yeah. the alternative? What's the downside? It's very little risk in that so third and one for Oklahoma State out of the 30 36 seconds left in a tie game this is where I might take a shot if I'm Oklahoma State I was just gonna you're, say. Gonna, you're gonna get favorable coverage man to man on the outside Right now, you got James Washington matched up one on one with Holden Hill. I completely agree. You only have 30 yards to get to that range at the 40 yard line. Washington right in front of your screen. And flags fly, and they were handing the football off anyway. Well, the, the guy that came in, all oh, the left guard jumped. He's nervous. It'll be a bad time for the first Oklahoma State penalty of the game. Todd, if I were them on the sideline, Oklahoma Ball State start. Number might be talking about that right now. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Talking about why don't we take a shot here? If we're going to get man to man on the outside, whether it's Aitman or whether it's Washington, our two best players on our team, why not take a shot against a favorable matchup on the outside man to man? You've got a six foot four receiver in Aitman and a guy in Washington who's great at the jump ball. So it looks like they're going to double Aitman and leave Washington one on one. Third and six. 36 seconds left in the fourth quarter, tied at 10. And a draw play to Justice Hill. Playing for overtime. And they didn't get it, and Texas took a timeout. Chris Boyd came up to make another stop. I get the offensive line issues, but this is so out of character for the Cowboys. Yeah, I, Todd, I mean, I, it's hard to overstate the offensive line issues, though, right? If you drop back and try to throw the ball, you get a sack fumble. Um... But that's a, I agree. It's a very conservative approach. Because there's things you can do, right, to protect that offensive line. Wad them up, keep a tight end, or back in protection in, in the inside. But you can't completely hamstring your offense. Chris Boyd has made 13 tackles today. And he missed a few plays when he was banged up. And we talked about with Todd Orlando. Who, I asked him who are the most important players on their defense in this game. And without hesitation, he said there are two corners, Holton Hill and Chris Boyd. Holton Hill's made a bunch of plays yes. in the tackling in the run game as well. Those two guys, I bet, will get a gold star from uh, Todd Orlando tomorrow morning. Said because if we can win those one-on-one -on -one matchups, we can win this game. And here they are in position. See Josh Rowland to get an opportunity. 32 seconds left. Siner is back to punt at his own 11 yard line. Gets it in the air. That's the big key. Foreman will let it bounce. And they'll take an Oklahoma State bounce. They, they want to run some more clock, even. That's why they didn't touch it right away. It's a 45 yard punt. And so Texas will take over now at their own 29-yard line with one timeout left and 19 seconds left. Want to take a shot here, too? I wouldn't be surprised if they kneel on it right here, to be totally honest with you. Well, that strategy is much more understandable yeah. than the way Oklahoma State has played this. Well, and right now, I, I have more confidence in Texas's red zone offense with the feet of Sam Ellinger than I do with Oklahoma State's offense, believe it or not, because it's a downfield passing offense and not a slam in their runoff. 
interesting play call here. Ellinger, not going to kneel on anything, going to throw it down the field and complete. No, they're going to say he was out of bounds. Going to say little Jordan Humphrey was out of bounds when he made the catch. 13 seconds left. You can see Ellinger, he's, he is not comfortable in the pocket. He drops back maybe two steps. That looks like it might be a complete pass. Oh, they changed it. Little Jordan Humphrey. Short of the line to gain. Yeah, he got that left foot down. So that, I don't think they looked at it. They just changed their mind. They just changed their the mind. On the field is a completed catch. The previous play is under further review. Keith Garmond is the line judge. That was hey, bizarre. I give, I give Keith credit, you know. I, maybe uh, because the, call, the original call on the field was not completed catch. It was an emphatic out of bounds. <laughs> and then it was completed catch. And now we'll look at it. See, you know, it's hard for these officials to see control of the ball and see the foot at the same time. I don't care how he gets it done, just that he gets it right, yes, right? So he call it, call it wrong and then correct himself. I give Keith credit. I think I see some green there between the shoe and the out of bounds. That took just six seconds off the clock. In case you're curious, Joshua Rowland, the kicker, his career long is 44. So they've got some yardage to go. Yeah. Boy, Tom Herman talked with us yesterday about finding that signature win. If they could find some way to win this After game, review. what that would mean. Rolling on the field is confirmed. It is a catch. Check it down, Texas. Something to validate kind of how he has worked to change this program and change the attitude, change the effort, change the expectation. And uh, sometimes you need that signature win. And a top 10 uh, team here uh, at home would definitely qualify. Second and one. 13 ticks left in the fourth quarter. Ellinger to throw. Trying to step out of the pressure. And he will be taken down by a host of players, including Bradford and Phillips. And that'll do it. Regulation. History. We played fourth quarters and haven't settled anything. <laughs> Tenth ranked Oklahoma State on the ropes. Tied at 10. We're walking you back to overtime after this. Steve Levy, Brian Greasy, and Todd McShay back in Austin, Texas. What do you say we play some free football? Overtime. Tenth-ranked Cowboys and Longhorns and the overtime rules. And actually, I love the overtime of college football. Oh, yeah. It's fun. And that's, that's the point. Uh, each team will get one possession from the 25. No game clock. You can throw that away. The play clock only. And should we get to a third overtime, no more extra points. Got to go for two. And I think the advantage here, quite honestly, is for Texas. They've been in two of these games already this season. Two, two overtime games. One against USC, they lost. And then Kansas State, they won right here in Austin. And they've been pretty good in overtime. Longhorns are the only team in the FBS to play more than one overtime. One more than one overtime game. And this will be the third one of the season for them. And I think this is where, you know, the, the legs and the running ability of Sam Ellinger really give Texas an advantage. I know they haven't done a whole lot Gentlemen, offensively game. throughout the course of the game, but that's going to be a factor. Possession from the 25-yard line going in, first and 10. The winner of the coin toss gets a choice of offense, defense, or which end of the field we're going to play on. Each team gets one timeout for the overtime series, and they do not carry over. Oklahoma State, you're the visitors. You get to call the coin toss. Heads, tails, heads. Tails. 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 Tails is the call. It is heads. Texas, you want the toss. Offense. You want defense? What's in the field we're going to play on? You want, to, you want to defend this goal? You want your backs to the, this goal. All right, so your backs to this goal. Flip it around. Flip around. Turn around. First and ten. Texas. All right, so we sorted that out. Any uh, strategy to taking the ball first? 
correct? Oh, yeah. We're you, going on defense? You always want to be on defense first. You want to know exactly what you need to get. You know, if that first team kicks a field goal, you, it informs your, your play calling. But I, I, I've also, we talked about Ellinger and his legs and why that's an advantage for Texas. I also think Texas' defense has been more stout in the red zone in this game in particular, and that's been led up front by Puna Ford and Malcolm Roach. So, I mean, the big storylines here, this could be the Texas signature win they've been looking for. Again, Coach Herman told us he didn't, they weren't expected to win, and it would break the pattern of these moral victories. Yep. And on the other side, here's Oklahoma State, who had the 10th ranked team in the nation, number one offense in the country, who have not played very well all day, and they've got a chance to escape and really erase all this by still coming out of here with a victory. Yep, and they're still in that college football playoff conversation, right? Even with the loss to TCU, they've got enough on their schedule. Oklahoma and Bedlam coming up. But before they get to any of that, they have to have this game or they're out of the playoff picture. So that sets up things nicely. Mason Rudolph, top-ranked passer in the country with a top-ranked running back and top-ranked wide receiver in the Big 12 Conference. Rudolph with time underneath to Jalen McCleskey. And he falls forward. Going to bring up a second down and short. And if I'm Mason Rudolph, I'm Mike Zurich, the offensive coordinator, I'm thinking about taking some shots to the end zone here because I know my offense hasn't been real good inside the five. I'm much better when I have space for my speed wide receivers to run. So be aggressive here. Take a shot to the end zone. Second and two. They put it on the ground at Justice Haley is wrapped up by Malik Jefferson. Fifth tackle. And Brian, if they continue to leave McCleskey, number one, the slot receiver, with some cushion, that would be the direction I would go. He's done a great job over the middle of the field throughout the entire game. Third and one. Good play fake. Faked out a lot of people. It's caught by Teron Johnson. The ball comes loose. That's an on, uncomplete that's pass. Ruling yeah. really on the field is an incomplete pass. Ruling really on the field is an incomplete pass. Fourth down. Again, another play from Holden Hill. Locked up in man-to-man -man coverage. He's in tight man-to-man -man on Aitman. Sorry, that's Chris Boyd. Aitman's got that ball. Got to control it all the way to the ground, and it's punched out at the very end by Chris Boyd. You very teach, end. Teach those corners to fight through that ball all the way to the ground. I think that's a good call by the official. Matt Amendola will come on. Again, missed a 22-yarder in regulation that could have won it. Timeout. Oklahoma State. 30-second timeout. You get one timeout every overtime. What's going through Amendola's head right now, standing on that field. This is the last time he was out from 29, and he just pushed it to the right. And it's interesting that it wasn't uh, Tom Herman that called that timeout. That was his own coach, Mike Gundy. And Amendola has five misses this season, three of them from inside the 30-yard line. That's what you love about college football, right? These games come down to the very end, exciting overtimes. In the NFL, this is an extra point. You know, in college football, there's so many nerves. These 18 to 22-year-old kids, you never know what's going to happen. This will be a 34-yard attempt. Amendola, a sophomore from Lansdale, Pennsylvania. To put the pressure on Texas. On the way, and it is good. Just tucked it inside that left upright. Tuck it in. Pressure kick. Yeah, give him credit. I mean, that's, that is not easy to do. Come back after missing that short field goal and pressure situation. Good for him. Now, if you're Texas, you know exactly what you need to do. 
need to score a touchdown yep. and you win. So when they got down in the red zone against Oklahoma they haven't been there very much today so we haven't seen a whole lot when they got down there they loved the play action pass to Kate Brewer the tight end and I felt like Sam Ellinger missed him in that game wouldn't be surprised if they tried that to Brewer here got inside the red zone two times during regulation time and here they start at the 25 to begin their first possession in overtime Texas touchdown and wins it field goal keeps it going Ellinger on the ground trying to get outside he will get outside but it'll be taken down for a loss Chad Whitener and Calvin Bundage brought him down and he went down hard on the sideline much like he did a week ago he jogs back out he's you're not going to have the speed to outrun this Oklahoma State defense not here in overtime you see the back of his head goes down on the ground again it was the side of his head a week ago and this time the back of his head loss of two on the play second and 12. Ellinger to throw for the end zone and it is not the way the flag comes in Lorenzo Joe the intended target and AJ Green on the coverage love that play call from Tim Beck take a shot against man to man pass interference number four defense 15 yard penalty from the previous spot automatic first down and AJ Green's there he's playing the ball he does a great job of playing the football I think that call was before he went up for that had his hand on the back of Joe see if you can see it from this side right here when he goes up for that football I think that's what that back judge saw there Ellinger's mom reacting to her son inching closer to what she hopes will be a victory from the 12 on first down. Here's Hurd. Down to the seven. Jordan Brelford made the stop. So only the second penalty on Oklahoma State all game is a big one, the pass interference call. And that's the first carry for Hurd in this ball game. Now you see him come back into the backfield again. The check from the sideline and Tim Beck. Quick throw out to Hurd. They get back to the line of scrimmage. Ramon Richards runs him out. Third down upcoming. We are in overtime in Austin, Texas. 10th ranked Oklahoma State got the field goal in their possession and this is Texas's first try on third and four Ellinger rolling to his left in all sorts of trouble floats one and it's intercepted oh, intercepted Ramon Richards the pick and that's your ball game Texas loses another heartbreaker and Oklahoma State escapes Play 60 minutes of hard football. Texas laid their heart on the line. Sam Ellinger laid his heart on the line. You get into overtime. The play's not there. And Sam Ellinger, as a true freshman, hasn't been in that situation. To just throw the ball away, kick the field goal, and go to two OTs. And you're going to see this play never had a chance. We're trying to run a little pick route on the outside, throw it into the stands. And he just gives the game up right there. That's a tough, tough way to learn a lesson for Sam Ellen. Greece, that is Texas' only turnover of the game. Ramon Richards on the pick, the easiest decision he'll ever have to make. Guy who considered Harvard and Yale. Impressed they considered him. And Richards makes the smart play there. And the reaction from Ellinger's mom. Down on the field, here's Todd McShay. Wow. Coach, so many offensive line issues you had to overcome today with the injuries. How difficult was it for you as a play caller? 
Well, I give a lot of credit to Texas. They played a hell of a game. And um, we had a few issues here and there. Um, I'm just proud of our team, the way that we just continued to fight. And we had our backs against the wall there in the end, but they just keep fighting. They're great young men. Um, we do things the right way. They buy in, and that's what happens. But I'll say this, uh, uh, that was a hell of a football game, but we just made too many mistakes on offense and special teams. We've really got to improve. Their punter about won the game for them. Uh, the defense played so well today. How much confidence does it give that group to know that you can win in this style of game? Well, no, there's no question it's uh, the best game our defense has played by far. So proud of them and Glenn Spencer and the staff and played their heart out. Uh, they're a physical team. They can be physical on the perimeter and running the ball. Quarterback's a good player, but I tell you, our guys played their butt off and made a play in the end. You know, sometimes that's what you got to do when you're on the road, find a way to overcome mistakes. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. Back to you, Steve. Todd, thank you. Oklahoma State next up at West Virginia. That'll be a tough test. It's an overtime thriller here in Austin, 13 to 10. We'll send you to East Lansing, where the Hoosiers are taking on the Spartans of Michigan State. The Brian Greasy, Todd Pache. I'm Steve Levy. That action coming up after these messages.